don't know if you have your speaker on. There you go. Yes, I've got a little flippy thing here. So. Perfect. Yeah. I got a Thing too. My flippy thing wasn't down. Now you can probably hear me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice Thank to you. see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> so everybody's arriving. I, I put the video on like an hour early just because I was working and I wanted to make sure my, my mirroring software was all working right. So people started showing up. So we're just kind of poking around until until everybody until everybody comes and I'm just, um, you know, prepping materials and stuff. Did you, did, did you, um, as, as we do sort of the demo today, probably it, um, you know, it's a whole group of, of people that haven't sewn together before. So maybe people won't want to sew, sew along, but, um, but uh, the pattern is available, um, to, to print out if you wanted to print it out today. So, um, I added that, that to the, um, to the post. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, good. Everybody's arriving. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Juliet. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I know not everybody has their camera on. Don't feel like you have to turn it on. And, um, and probably once we get started, I might, um, for the demo part, I might um, have everybody just turn their microphones off um, just so that like no background noise is in the way. But, um, um, but then I thought maybe I would open it up um, periodically and just kind of tell everybody to turn their microphones back on and then we can, um, we can chat and answer questions and, and, and so forth. So we'll do that periodically um, in the process. Good, good. Look at this. I think we've got quite a good group today. Um, I was looking back and a few more people had written. Oh, there we go. There's another, there's Rebecca, there's Becca. Hi, Becca. And Lisa, hi, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. So let me check my list here and see who else we're waiting for. Um, okay, good, everybody's joining. We've got 12. Um, Hello, hello, welcome if you're just joining. All right, let me get into a grid. Maybe I can see everybody if I put in the grid. There we go, let's see. Mm, wonderful, hello, mm -hmm. welcome, welcome. And Moira, oh good. All right, not sure how many people I'm gonna be able to see on my grid. I think I might have to um, eventually um, get the thing so I can do, oop, Sylvia, hi Sylvia. Um, I think I might, okay, there we go. All right, everybody's getting in here. Oh, Tina. Great. Hi, Tina. All right. So, um, great. I'm so glad you guys could join. Oh, still more. We've got a few more people. We'll give it, maybe give it four or five more minutes just to make sure. <laughs> and then I can, so then we'll get started. Beautiful. What's that one for? Susan. Uh, Hi, Susan. Hi. Um. <laughs> <What was that? laughs> okay, let's see if I can see everybody. And Lisa. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. All right. Mm -hmm. 
right. There we go. Hello, hi, Dre. All right. All right, did everybody find the pattern? I was starting to say that before. Everybody found the pattern in the, in the post? Good, good. Um, so I can't see everybody on my screen, so I'm going to, um, oh, there's Moira. Hi, Moira, hi, Christina. Welcome, welcome. Great. All right, so um, I was, I'm a little scatterbrained as everybody's joining. <laughs> Just making sure we've got everyone. <laughs> okay. If I go out and then go there, I lose it. I feel like we probably have everyone, but I'm not entirely sure. And I can't see everybody on this on on the screen, so I apologize. I'm not quite I've not had um um I've not had this many people before um all at once, so I'm not quite sure how to see everybody. Um, I can just see the grid, so I can only see like 10 of us, I think, at a time. But, um, but so because I can't see you, if you, if you want to say anything or you have a question, I'm going to keep the, um, I'm going to keep my list of people open here and hopefully you can, um, um, hopefully you can text me a message or uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to open up, I'm going to open up conversation. Um, sort of midway after I've gotten a little ways through the process to, if anybody has questions or whatever and we'll um, we'll learn together about having a big group because <laughs> this is the first time I've had more than like nine people on at a time. <laughs> All right so let's jump in since um, since um, we've got such a nice big group here. Let's see if I can move my screen share over there it is. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. So um, I was just getting a few things prepped, but I thought I'll pull everybody out here so we can take a mm -hmm. look. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, I thought I would sort of um, demo the mouse, which was the first image that we um, that I showed you guys on in our post and on Instagram. And then the pattern includes the ears for a, a little dog style. And a tail, which will be going on for the dog. Um, this little—I um, don't know what he is. He's maybe a sea monster or maybe a Martian. I don't know. Maybe he's um, maybe he's a dragon. Um, anyhow, so there's a pattern for his parts, and then there's a pattern for rabbit as well. Um, I didn't yet do a pattern for this little scarf, but it's just you know a basic holly leaf. Um, you know, on either end of a little strip of belt. So um, anyhow, but I'll, I've got all the ears cut out for these guys. And so I'll show you how to put on the different ears as well, but we'll start with the basic body. So let me get these out of the way. Um, all right, so this guy, um, um, now the first question is, has everybody used, does everybody know about freezer paper and how to use iron on, a freezer paper should I do any kind of demo on that okay I see one shaking head y yes do a demo okay great oh. let's do it um okay so freezer paper so let's start here so here's our um here's the pattern that I've got uh in included in the post right now and what I did here was I I laid this this pattern page on its back side so you could so I could see through it and I just put and then I just put, oops, there's another person joining us. Hold yeah. on a minute. You can do with the camera. Oh, Beth. Hi, Beth, how are you? Um, so, um, so what I did on our pattern page is I just put some little rolls of adhesive tape on the back um, of each pattern piece. So you just kind of hold it up to the light and you can see through the pattern. And then this is my freezer paper here. And um, so freezer paper is something you can find at most grocery stores. Um, you can also find it online pre-cut into eight and a half by 11 sheets. And 
And you can print on this paper if you have a, um, an inkjet printer. Um, I only have laser printers at home, which get too hot. And so the plastic side um, of the freezer paper will just adhere to the inside of your printer. So just make sure you don't use it with a laser printer, only with, um, um, only with an inkjet. Um, okay, we've got, hi, Helen, welcome. We're just, Helen, we're just getting started. Um, I'm talking about freezer paper and, um, and how to either print or adhere your pattern page to freezer paper. So, um, so freezer paper has one side that's plastic um, and you can see there's sort of a sheen on this. Um, and then the other side is the paper side. Um, so I'm using my little tape here um, on the back of my paper pattern and I'm sticking it down to the shiny side so it peels off easily. So um, you can just do that to your whole pattern and then you can cut out all these little pieces um, and you'll have a duplicate pattern in freezer paper. And the cool thing about freezer paper is this. So let me get one of my pieces. Um, so here's, um, here's one of the bunny ears. I'll just take that apart. So I, I cut that out and hello, welcome, welcome. Is that you, Micah? Mika? God, that's terrible. Um, okay, got it. I didn't quite see. All right, so here's one of our bunny ears. Um, and, um, and I have um, my taped piece, and here's my freezer paper piece. Let me just get my iron heated up. And I'll cut that out in this beige, which is what we're using for the bunny ears. So you're gonna lay down the, um, the plastic side or the shiny side of your freezer paper onto the felt. Um, you wanna make sure you don't have the shiny side up because it'll just adhere to your iron surface. Um, and then you put your, put your iron on, on a high setting and it doesn't take long at all. It's just like, you know, kind of like one, two, and, and you're good. And, um, and so the entire surface of that freezer paper will be adhered to your felt. And then it's really easy to cut out your patterns accurately uh, because every little edge is nicely attached. And so you can just go ahead and go around your pattern and, um, and then it peels right off. If you, um, if you have the iron on high and you really kind of let it sit on there, um, it will attach a lot more strongly, um, but um, and so it might pull up the fibers of the felt a little bit. But that's not a problem either. Um, you can just go ahead and go back and you know hit it with the iron again and flatten out those fibers if your um, if your um, if your pattern got like really really well adhered. So that's how you use the freezer paper. And again, um, you can um, print directly onto it if you have a uh, inkjet printer. Um, so anyhow, I did that with all of these pieces. And so we're just gonna start here. And there's, hi Sue. Welcome, welcome, we're just getting started. Um, Sue, we just went over freezer paper um, and how to use that, um, but um, I'm recording this whole thing and I'll post it afterwards. So um, if you missed that, no worries, you can catch it later, all right? Um, all right, so let's start with the, um, let's start with the body. Um, I've got some needles here. Now, I don't know um, how you guys, what you guys, how you buy your needles. Um, let me just show you these. Um, are what I use most of the time. That one's getting a little ratty, but okay. So um, as far as needles go, my okay. you can buy um, you know you can buy mixed packs that don't really have any size names on them. Um, but if you but you can also buy them in individual packs that have like you know multiples of the same size. My favorite sizes are the eights and the tens. You can see the pages. Um, let me just uh, hold on a second. Let's see. Okay. All right. And 
I'm just, I'm just, um, I just muted a couple people just in case because there was some background noise. So don't, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't feel bad. I just thought, um, just to keep it sound clean for the moment until we go to question and answer. Um, okay, so um, eights and tens are my favorite sizes. Eights are the larger of the two. Um, and these ones are relatively, they're pretty easy to thread. Um, the size tens are a nuisance to thread, but they're so fine and they're beautiful to use. And if you can manage it, you'll really enjoy sewing with the tens, I think. Um, one trick for threading really tiny needles um, is you can, um, you can, you can wet the eye um, and wet the end of your thread. Let me get a new piece of thread. Um, I have a couple different tricks for this. Uh, huh. Let's just get a piece of thread. Oh, and let's, let me just show you this too. Um, so usually I break my skeins down. I, I stitch almost exclusively with um, DMC embroidery floss. Um, it tangles less than machine thread. It's meant for hand sewing. Um, so I'll break my skeins down into eight equal lengths. And then you have these bundles, you know, and to separate your threads, if you pull multiple threads at the same time, the whole thing will just turn into a big chaotic mess and you'll get knots. But if you pinch your bundle and pull one thread at a time, all of this stuff just, let's see, what's the best way to see it? There we go. Um, all of this stuff kind of gathers up like that and then it falls free and clear. And so you don't get tangles. So, um, so keep that in mind as a good way to separate your thread. And then when I have these, when I have these lengths that are um, eight equal lengths, I think there's like 8.6 or seven yards um, in a skein. Um, and so that ends, we end up having like 38 to 40 inches um, of, um, of thread, but I like to sew with half that length. So I usually use a single thread and half the length um, of the pieces I've cut that are like eight equal pieces. All right, so you can wet the eye, do a clean cut on the end of your thread. And um, I, I have really wimpy fingernails, so I keep them super, super short. Um, so, it's, so if you have longer nails, this might be a little tricky, but what I like to do is pinch, let me see if I can zoom in here. Does this allow me to do that? On. There we go. Okay. Um, so I make it so you can just see, barely see the end of the thread between your fingers. And so it's completely supported. And then you can kind of take the needle and shimmy it down over the whole, um, shimmy the hole down over the thread rather than pushing the thread through the eye. Um, and that works pretty well. And I can almost always get it through doing that. Um, one other thing that you might try if you're having a hard time with, um, with small needles is a little bit of uh, tailor's wax. Um, and you can just take that and hit the end that you're gonna be threading and then kind of smooth it out like that. And that will stiffen the end of your thread and also make it easier. And it's, it like, smooths and flattens the fibers right at the end. So that's another way of, um, of threading really small needles. Okay, so, um, so this is my favorite um, Taylor's Wax is this nice Merchant and Mills um, brand. It's a little bit softer than, um, than a tea light, um, but I use tea lights too. So if you have a little beeswax tea light, you can use that if you wanna give it a go. And another thing that I read about recently that's really cool is um, I'm, I'm making a suit coat for my partner. And so I bought a nice book on, on sort of couture tailoring. And, um, and I've, I've done things where I've waxed thread before, but what they were saying for tailoring is that you can run your whole thread through the tailor's wax, and then you lay your thread between two layers of paper and iron it and pull the thread through. And, um, and basically all the wax will melt off of it, but your thread will, not tangle at all when you sew it's it's um and so it's something that i'm excited to play around with but it's definitely like kind of one of those above and beyond things so um 
So you might want to try it and fall in love with it, or you might just throw your hands up and say that's too much work. Um, but I thought I would tell you about it anyway. All right, so eights and tens. So um, great. Okay, and then these guys are are um, long darners, and this is what I like to use for stitching the eyes in um, because it, they're just like a longer um, a, a longer needle. Um, that's good for um, getting through the head and getting the eyes on. So typically I use fives or sevens or 005s and 007s. Um, and the 007 is a little bit larger um, and the 005 is a little bit smaller. Um, but both of these will work in all the sizes of eyes that I sell in my Etsy shop. Okay. Um, and, I, and I actually ordered those recently. So um, I'll have those available in the shop soon too. All right. So let's start with, now that I've threaded the needle in the wrong color, let's start with the body. This is, this is close enough. All right. Oh, somebody's joining us. Uh, hello. Welcome, welcome. We're just getting started here. I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So let me get this threaded here. All right. So on the body, um, I did all of my stitching, well, most of my stitching. Let's take this scarf off here. Um, so that it's, um, it's all on the inside. So this seam here, which is this seam here, um, is stitched on the inside. And then these little darts here, which are the side darts here and here, those are stitched on the inside. And this one is optional. So you can stitch this one, you can stitch all of these on the inside and then turn the piece or you can leave this one um, visible on the back side. Um, so I will get started with that. All right, so, um, so this one's gonna be on the inside. And when I'm stitching the darts, um, I like to, let's go right up to the camera here. I like to start right below where the dart ends. So, um, and go just through the surface, but not so that it's visible on the other side. And that makes the dart sort of fade in really nice without having a little um, pucker at the bottom of it. So then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my whip stitch here. So the whip stitch is um, wraps around the edge. And what I like to do is hold it um, like this. So I'm sort of, this is my, my ring finger and my thumb are t pinching together and then my index finger and my middle finger are pinching together. And that just sort of supports that whole edge as I'm stitching. And, um, and then I do all my stitching, stitching away from my body. So like starting here and going um, out away from my body. And the reason is that, that this thread just drops down um, in front. Hold on, let me let, hi Jim, welcome. Um, the whole thing will be recorded, Jim. So um, if there's anything you missed at the beginning, I'll be posting the recording afterwards, okay? Um, all right, so um, so as I was saying, we're, we're um, stitching away from our body. And I try to make the stitches about a 16th of an inch deep into my edge. Um, let's see if we can go up nice and close again here. Okay, so about a sixteenth of an inch um, from the edge and about a sixteenth of an inch apart. Um, and that will give you a really nice, strong seam allowance. Um, and it won't take up, like if you go really deep in, into the edge, the size of your thing, will, the size of your finished object will change. But if you don't go deep enough, then um, when you stuff it, the, you could have a blowout and nobody wants that. So, um, so anyhow, and then as I'm going, part of what I'm doing here is I'm creating this platform. 
Let's see if we can focus again. I'm creating this platform with the sort of the pads of my finger so that um, so that I can kind of like use that to, to rest the needle on as I'm going through. And the other thing is, <laughs> so many little details. So the other thing is like as, see how this um, thread wants to kind of lean this way? So it either wants to lean this way or it wants to lean that way. And then your stitches aren't nicely aligned next to each other. But if, as you pull down, you take these two fingers and you press in, then it holds that thread in line. So I'm visibly pressing in, pressing in. That holds your thread. Um, you sort of get into a rhythm and that holds your thread so that it, um, it comes down straight instead of like at an, at an angle this way or this way. Um, all right. So those are all the little, the little whip stitchy kind of details um, to get your stitches nice and straight. Um, one other little additional thing is that, so I'm sewing with an individual, with a single strand of thread, and I don't have it fully doubled um, so that I can, um, I can move this, you know, up and down and give myself slack as I need it. Um, and a single thread tends to give you a cleaner stitch than a double thread. Um, I, over the years, I started out everything stitching with two threads um, because I was, I was designing things that I thought children, children would be making, and I thought they might break the thread with a single thread. But um, I've found over the years that the single thread just gives you a much tidier looking um, finished, finished piece. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say about? Oh, yeah. And then as each, each time you pull um, your thread down to the edge, if you give it a little, you know, just like, just a little kind of, kind of boom like that, um, you'll see the thread kind of sink down a little bit into the edge um, of the felt. And that's great because if it's just loosely sitting on that edge, when you go to stuff it, it will kind of open, you know, it'll open up a little bit and you won't, you know, your, your seam won't be quite as strong. So, um, so just that little, like little tug right at the end of each stitch and, um, and it'll pull it down really nicely. Okay, so then we have, we're come to the end of our first dart here and um, I'm going to make my finishing knot. So I'll do that. Um, so what you want basically is to make a cross in your thread. So you can do that like this way, this sort of, I sort of hold it like this. It's a little awkward seeming. And then I do that. And then I have, I have all my little fingers through this, through that crossing of the thread, through that loop. And then I switch, I put the needle into my left hand and I take all this with my right hand, just these last three fingers. And then I wanna hold my thread here so it doesn't pull out of my needle. And then open these fingers. So I'm pulling taut this way and I'm pulling taut this way. Um, and then that crossing point is right at the surface of my felt and I can put my thumb on it and pull back. Um, now I forgot to do it here, but you can also do this thing. Just pretend that I didn't just knot that off. You can also do this thing where you move, um, and this is helpful. You'll find this is helpful like on like head seams and things like that where the next step that you do, you might catch that knot. So I take, um, my, let's zoom in again. Um, so I take my needle and I go just through the surface um, of the fiber. So it's not gonna show on the other side. And then I can do my finishing knot back away from the edge so that this, so that the knot is not gonna get my way for something I'm doing later on. So we'll just do one more knot here just for, just for kicks. All right, so that's that one. So then we have these two more, two more darts, and I'm just gonna, um, as I'm stitching these, if anybody has any questions and you wanna open up your microphones, um, um, let me know and I can answer questions because I'm gonna stitch these other two darts. The process is gonna be exactly the same. 
So I can just move forward and chit chat if you guys have some, some questions you wanna ask. All right, let's go back. Cynthia, you just make one knot at the end of your stitching. You don't double or treble it. You don't worry about the knot pulling free or um, untying. I often will do, um, I often will do two on top of each other. So, um, yeah, so um, let's see, hold on. Let me get to the end of this one and I'll do it just the way I would do it. All right, so sometimes right at the end, I'll make two stitches on kind of like right on top of each other, two whip stitches right on top of each other, and then I'll do two knots right on top. Okay. Um, and that's and that's good. Um, the combination of that extra stitch at the end plus a double knot um, really makes um, for a secure ending. Now, I don't know if you guys know about, um, I've, I mean, I have it in most of my directions and you've seen it in some of the other videos, but just in case um, the, the quilter's knot, um, sometimes it's just nice to see it one more time, is one of my favorite ways to start. It, um, it gives you a really clean, organized knot that is like, you can sort of determine the size. If you do that rolly knot like this, you can often get kind of a big lumpy thing that won't, won't pop through your felt. So, um, so I really like this one. I should be do doing this maybe with a darker thread. Can you guys see that all right? Is that clear enough? Here, let me just do another focusing here. Okay. Um, so I take uh, the, the end that I want to knot and I lay it on my index finger and then I put my needle on top of it and then I wrap this way two, three. And what you, you want to make sure that you're wrapping over the needle in this direction, not, um, let me explain. So here's the end of my needle and then I want my wrapping to be in the middle here and then this is at the end. So there's another way you can do it when you do, let's see, how, how do you do that? When you go, sometimes people will have the wraps like here rather than in the middle. And I'm not sure if I can make that happen right now because I, but um, your, this, the process will work if your thread is here, your wraps are here and the other end of your thread is here. But, um, and then I slide it to my other finger and push up through those wraps. And then it's like a little tiny, I don't know what they call that in sailing, but there's a name for this in sailing see if we can get right in there and really see what's going on. Um, I'm not sure. It's a little, it's a little fuzzy when I get this close, but you can see there's like one, two, three wraps and this little loop is going around to bind them. And then when I pull it, I get this really nice organized small knot. So the more wraps I do, the larger the knot will be. Um, and the less I do, the smaller it will be. So sometimes you want your knot to pop right through the felt when you're starting. If you're, um, do you, if you have like a three-dimensional piece, like a head or something like that, and you're stitching the nose, you might enter your needle at the cheek, pop the knot right through, and then go ahead and stitch your nose, stitch the nose or the mouth or something like that. Let's go back a little bit again. All right, so here's the last dart on the body. Um, and open to questions again, if anybody's got some. Okay. Hi, Cynthia. Uh, is, is there a default thread that you could use if you don't have the correct color for, I mean, let's say that you're just kind of in a bind and you need to get your work done, but you don't have the matching embroidery floss. Is there a default floss that you use, like a, a general color that you would use on all the, you know? All on, any, on anything? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a, a default. Um, you know, like I don't know if I would use, like say for example, we're gonna use white, you know? Um, I guess I would probably say you would, I'm, you know, you, you can't use one color for everything and have it not show up, but you could do something that was in the same tone. So, um, 
for instance, like, um, you know, like this green is about the same depth, depth of color that this blue is. And, and that, if you're st doing your stitches on the inside, that would be less visible than something like black or, you know, I mean, um, I would just choose something within the same tone. Um, if you, if you have another blue, you know, go, go with, if you had, if you had like a navy blue and this green, I would, I would go with this, you know, because it's, it's, it's more muted and it will show up less. Um, but when it comes to choosing colors for felt, um, in general, um, you, almost always want to let's see if we can find an example here um so this one what did i use this one on oh that one i used on this so if we look at these two like if i look at this thread next to this it looks quite a bit darker but if i pull out a single thread The match is really nice, and so um, so often when you're choosing uh, thread colors, you want to go with a color that's just a hair deeper than the felt color, um, and it will um, and it will blend better. Hello, welcome, welcome. Um, um, but as far as yeah, as far as a single color that would do the trick for everything, that's a little bit that's a little bit tough. Um, but um, I think you maybe you would want to just figure out how to make it into a detail if you were doing that, you know, where um, and just experiment a little with something that looks that you think looks good. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever tried to use a single thread to match everything. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So we're back to the body here. And so now I'm on the back seam. Um, so I had about this much thread left. Um, but it's not quite enough to get up that back seam, so I'm just going to discard this. Um, if your thread gets too short, making your ending knots um, gets really tricky. So, um, so if I'm if I think I'm not going to make it on a seam, um, I often will just start fresh with a new the new piece. So the back seam here. We're doing, so you can either go ahead and sew it here and have all of this stitching, you turn it afterwards, or you can just do this and make your turning really easy and do this back seam on the outside. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the turning thing right now because uh, I'm going to show you how to turn that with some little pliers. Um, so we'll start again here. And uh, for instance, um, so since my all this stitching is going to be on the inside, I'm going to put my knot here on the outer edge. If, um, if this stitching was going to be visible, I would tuck my knot between the two layers um, so that it would be hidden. But for now, since we're turning it, we'll, um, we'll just go with our knot on the outside. Okay, so so that's the other thing about the length of thread. If you have a if you have a thread that is too long, um, you have this like long like ooh, you're like trying to trying to um, stretch your arm out too far to to um, to do each stitch. So I like to stitch with you know roughly thirty between thirty and thirty six inches. Um, because it's a nice length for stitching. And I'd rather use multiple threads um, if I have a long run than have a thread that's too long and tangles a lot. Okay. All righty, we are almost there. And at the neckline, that knot right at the end isn't um, isn't such a big deal. But I'll do those two 
do a couple of stitches on top of each other right at the end. And I'll do this thing again where we scoot the needle back right through the surface um, to get the knot out of the way of our next seam line. Okay. There we go. All right, so, um, so for this, you wanna, you wanna make sure you don't stretch out those openings too much. So, um, so I'm just gonna take this edge here and kind of tuck it inside with my pliers, but I don't wanna like jam my fingers in here to, to really open that, you know, stretch out that, that edge that we haven't stitched yet. So I'm just gonna gradually sort of scoot that down and turn it, and then we can get in here. Um, and open up those seams. All right, so that guy's ready. So let's do, um, so let's now do the, let's now do the head and then we can do the stuffing at, all at one, one, one get go for the stuffing and the stuffing the head and the body. So now I've got a piece for my, the head here. All right. And the lighter colors, the colors that are closer to, you know, or whatever color is closest to your skin tone, it starts to get harder to thread things because you can't see the thread as well. All right, so this is our headpiece. And if we're looking at this, this is gonna be the nose here and this dart and this dart um, are what form the volume in the back of the head. Um, this is the chin. This little arc here is the neck opening, and then that's the top of the head. So we're going to start with the two darts in the back of the head. So same thing for this here. Oh, I switched to a number eight, didn't I? Got a slightly bigger needle for this now. Okay, so we go ahead and Get these two darts. Now I'm just kind of zooming through this. Um, I don't normally stitch quite this fast, but uh, just thought for. Give us more time to talk and have questions later if we. Do one more knot. This would be a good place, and I didn't just do it here, to move that knot back again, to scoot it back, because here I could potentially catch that knot as I'm doing the seam for the top of the head. Um, so these guys, same thing as the body, um, this seam here, this seam here, and the darts are all gonna be stitched on the inside, and then the only seam, the only portion that's going to be sti stitched on the outside is from the dart to the back of the neck. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, the hole in the neck on this guy is a little bit too small to turn the whole thing. So by leaving that back portion of the head um, open, it makes turning a lot easier. So go ahead and get this dart. Okay, so here now I'll move my little, my little knot back to the surface there and finish up with that ending knot. Okay, so those two darts are stitched and we're gonna do from the nose to the chin on the same side again. I think I've got enough thread here to get that part done. So do this bit here. All 
right? All right, so now we've got, so that's the chin is done now. And these are the back of the head. And now we're gonna stitch. So I'm just gonna plop a little pin in here, right at the back of the dart, um, where the dart is to make sure those dart, that the back dart matches up. And then we're gonna stitch from the nose over the top of the head. But I need a new thread for that. There we go. Okay. All right, so there's our nose. Okay, so pinch and pull tight each one of those little stitches. So I did, um, I, um, I can't see everybody, so I don't know who asked about the, um, the thread color, but just um, if, you, if you are looking for threads to match any of the felt that I have in my Etsy shop, um, I do now have, I am selling the um, embroidery floss now, but also I have listed all of the colors that match best um, in the, um, in my Etsy color card. So I have one that's just for the felt and then I have one that's for the thread and it, and it shows you the DMC number that, that matches. Um, so if you have threads at home, you can look at that as a reference. Um, or if you wanna buy them locally, wherever you are, you can use that as a reference to go get them at your local craft store, the matching thread, or you can get them in my shop, whatever works uh, best. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just stitch just beyond the um just beyond the dart there and do a couple stitches on top and then knot off do a couple on top of each other all right so now here we've got because we left the back bottom part of the skull kind of open it'll give us a little more leeway for turning this so we're going to do the same thing again with our pliers and just kind of grab it and scoot it back some people use um i don't have any of these but um it's one of those little it's like a medical tool i can't think of what it's called um but it's it kind of clamps down um these <laughs> yes, those. What are they called? Hemostats. Hemostats. That's what they are. Yeah. I have not gotten any of those yet, but I see people using them all the time and I think I get, they get even come in they come in different sizes. So you can get like yeah. the really small ones. These are like three inches and then I have I think I have like six, five, and eight. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh boy, you've got a lot of them. Now somebody recommended recently, and let me see if I can find it. Um, I did just get it. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. I can't remember who recommended this. Oh yeah. But this is from a doll designer named uh, called Barbara Willis, um, and she's in Mountain View, California, or oh, she's in Palo Alto. It says. Um, but this is interesting. I and I haven't explored it too much. But I I always do all my stuffing with a bamboo skewer. But this is great. Um, this has this little. You can see the end of that. It has this like little forked end. Um, and there, where is? 
where is my focus? There it is. It has this little forked end which grabs the stuffing. Um, and she, she says she loves it. Um, I haven't explored using it too much. It, 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 um, it got a little caught on the inside of some of the felt for me, but, um, but I think I'm just so used to using the bamboo skewer. But anyway, if anybody's looking for a good stuffing tool, getting into really skinny areas, this thing's pretty cool. Um, okay, so here is this. So now we're gonna do that. We've gotta finish up the back seam of the head um, on the outside. That. Okay, so this time, because I, this seam is gonna be on the outside, I wanna hide that starting knot. So I'm gonna put my needle, let's see if I can zoom in a little. Um, put my needle kind of inside that edge so that knot is gonna um, get hidden, you know, in, inside here. So then we're gonna do our whip stitch again and go right down and stop at that opening for the neck. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do two stitches on top of each other. Oops, all right, so my thread just broke. I got a little aggressive. It's all right, happens sometimes. So I have this tiny little short thread. Oh, somebody's joining us, hold on a second. Welcome, welcome. We're just, uh, we're kind of midway here, but, um, but everything's being recorded so that you can watch this a little later. You can catch the beginning part. Go back there. All right, so um, if, you, if this does happen to you and you have this really short thread that you need to, um, that you need to knot, you're basically gonna do the same thing in miniature that we do, that we did with our, um, with the uh, making an ending knot. So I've crossed my, I've crossed my thread. Let's see if we can put this against something darker so you can see it. So I've crossed my thread and I'm gonna pull the end through. So I've just got this tiny little, tiny little bit here. And then I'm gonna take a pin and put the pin on the surface and pull down with my knot. Um, and that'll help you get a really short, really short thread um, knotted off at the end of your, oops, at the end of your, um, a broken thread here. Okay. All right. So there's our little head. And both of these things are now ready for stuffing. So this one's got, has got two openings. Um, the head will get attached here, um, but we're gonna leave everything, um, leave all those open so we can do our stuffing. Um, so in the stuffing, um, it's just shocking the amount of stuffing you can get inside these spaces. Um, I sometimes keep a little scale, like a little kitchen scale handy. Um, when I'm developing so that I know if I've gotten the weight of something to the, you know, matching the, the other ones that I've done before. Um, so if you have, if you happen to have a kitchen scale, I can, I'll weigh these things um, after I stuff the head so you can kind of jot down a, what that weight is. Um, so, you know, when you're first starting to do your stuffing, um, you want to use sort of smallish pinches and just pivot the head or whatever it is that you're stuffing so that you're getting, you know, even amounts on all sides so it doesn't kind of bulk up on like the left side or the right side or whatever and, um, and just look kind of lopsided. And, uh, and as you're stuffing, like initially you'll be able to push stuff right into the middle of the head, but then it's gonna start to get hard to, to go directly into the center of the head. And you're gonna want to um, 
scoot your stuffing sort of in the cavity between where the stuffing is and where the felt is. So you sort of slide it up into the side areas. And uh, so then I kind of, same thing, keep pivoting um, and keep stuffing. And the other thing that I like to do too is the cut end of your bam bamboo skewer often will have like, it's not sharp, you know, it's a touch, but it has enough texture that it grabs. So if I take the fiber and, I can, and the tool and I kind of twist it like that, it'll kind of grab the fiber as it's going in and you can direct it to the spot that you want it. Um, okay. So let's just see, now I've got, yeah, I'm kind of curious what the weight is on this. So this isn't my, my most, um, I got it on here. So it's on grams. All right, so this already has the eyes in, so that's gonna add some weight, but what are we at? Oh, it says it's zero grams, really. Okay, so I might need my more fine scale for this. So that's, <laughs> okay, four grams. Okay, so, so this is fluctuating between <laughs> one and two grams right now. Like I can put like three times as much stuffing into this to get to this one. Um, so if you look at the two heads, you can see how like this still looks like a little bit angled and flat here. Um, but what we want is for the head to feel really round on the sides. So I'm gonna keep going. And um, and pivoting and turning. Um, yep. Yeah. Cool. The I was the one that uh, recommended the the stuffing fork. But yeah. The, tell me. Tell me about your experience with it. Well, you're uh, Gail Wilson, um, a a uh, doll designer, recommended it mm -hmm. initially, and Let's you're able it. to grab the the stuffing. It kind of hangs onto the stuffing. So yes. Right where you want it. Yeah, now see, now I'm giving it a try. So yep. this is interesting. So what I what when I first was starting to use this, it felt like my hand was too far away yes. from what I was doing. So do you hold it closer like this? Yes. You do, okay. Yeah, okay. otherwise I feel like I'm gonna bend it or break it. But, right, 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 but yeah. A bamboo, <clears throat> a bamboo skewer, I would probably break it or ram it through my hand or something <laughs> along that. I do break them. They, they don't last forever. Oh, yes, hello. Cynthia, Moira. I, don't know what you're I also have that same stuffing fork and I really, really love it. You do? Oh, good. I, I make all, I use it for all your little critters. But what she tells you to do is you don't just poke the stuffing in, but you use the fork to swirl a little piece of stuffing around it. Oh, so really? Okay. Before you put it in. So that if ah. you're trying to place, so that's what um, I find really helpful about that. Oh, interesting. Fork. Okay, so she does, she kind of does so this. So you take a little piece of stuffing in yeah. your, your fingers and then you s use the little st stuffing fork to swirl it around to sort Interesting. of gather it onto the, hmm. onto the fork and then okay. you place it. Oh, all right. Well, that's great for really long skinny things too because you it can really get down. Like, yeah. yeah, if you're stuffing your legs or something mm -hmm. like that. Really I nice. do wish it came with a smaller... Uh, you know the like, metal like piece this was shorter was much smaller yeah yeah well i found yeah i've gotten I so think. used to holding the 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 sort of diameter of the skewer mm -hmm. that i'm more i'm more used to that and so getting used to hang holding on to something this fine um right. is a little bit of a you know it's just a learning curve right I but think someone um made me one i have to find it but with a wooden handle on it that uh -huh. the, the Metal piece is much smaller so that your hand is. Oh. Barbara Willis used to do those, the dolls with the big long arms and legs. Yes. Yeah. I've, the pictures of her work show those. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so let me, so now I, I know you guys have probably all you know seen this now in, in all my other videos, but um, but so this is my one of my favorite things is just to kind of go up here because as it gets tricky, um, um, getting around there, there might be points where you're like, okay, it's starting to look lumpy on the out outer surface, um, but if you make a nice little channel right into the center, you can just keep. Um, adding stuffing in in sort of like in the middle and so that it expands outward you know like that um, and I like to do that because it really gives the the head a nice rounded um, look to it um, and you can do that multiple times you can just kind of keep chopping up into the center um, and if you want it to go in the back of the head you can make a channel that's kind of angled more towards the back that way um, and you can just direct it um into the areas that you want by creating your own your own channel so all right i feel like we're getting close here let's take a quick peek all right so um so sometimes also when you get the head where it feels nice and firm and you think you're really there and you look at it and you're like oh it needs a little bit more over here um so you can kind of go in and press towards that side to pop it out. Another thing that you can do too is just kind of like take charge of the head and just go squish, 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 you know, and um, and redistribute your stuff, your stuffing a little bit. And so you can um, you can kind of rework the way that the stuffing is filling the space, and um, and often that will make the head more round and get rid of any of those funny little angles that you might have left over from your darts or whatever. So. Um, and then, um, and then, of course, you can hit it with your iron, which I always love to do. Um, get this guy heated up here. Another minute. Um, and then I just take it and press the whole head, sometimes like this, on the surface of my iron. My iron's not really that that hot yet, but oh, hold on, let me let that. Uh, hello. Welcome, welcome. Cynthia, could you could you explain the purpose of doing that with the iron? Sure, yeah. So sometimes when you're, um, well, often when you're working with the felt and you're kind of, you know, manhandling it and, uh, you know, and doing your stuffing, um, the surface of the felt will get a little bit, um, okay. you know, a little bit worked, worked up. The other yeah. thing, um, the other thing is that it smooths out. So all of our seams right now on this head are really on the inside. But when you have a head like, for instance, um, where's one that? Um, yeah, let's do it on the back of this one. Okay, so this is one that I made with like tiny little ears. Um, um, but so like from back here, we have this this seam. Um, so sometimes. If you're um, if you're doing all your seams on the outside, ironing um, the seam afterwards will just flatten the exterior mm -hmm. seam out a little bit and make it okay. make it feel smoother. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. Um, you can also um, when you have an exterior seam like this, let me get a needle here. Um, uh, you can also do um, this thing where you bring up the fiber all the way around it you know just kind of like where that seam is um, and then iron it um, and you can also hit it this is another place where you can just do a little bit of that hairspray thing mm -hmm. so if i bring up the fiber a little bit there let's see if we can get so now that seam that was pretty visible before is um mm -hmm. we can do that and then we hit it with this and um and it almost has it. It almost has that look of like pressed felt, like an old vintage pressed felt dolls, where you just don't. You know, it's almost completely gone now. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Good, good. All right. So now let's stuff the body on this one. So I'm just gonna start with just my fingers because I've got enough room. Right. 
Okay. So I'm going to finish stuffing the bottom afterwards, and I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit right in the neck here. And then we can attach the head and then finish stuffing the bottom afterwards. Okay. All right, so now we're ready for the head. So, um, so if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at the body, the, the side with the full seam is the back, back seam and the one that we did the dart on is the front. So our head's gonna go on like that and get some thread. So whenever I'm doing he attaching heads, I usually use a double strand of thread just because um, you're gonna be pulling a little bit more than um, you would on a regular seam to draw everything in. And, um, and it just makes it a little more sturdy. So get a double thread cooking. And, um, and I always, uh, hmm, where'd my scissors go? There they are. Okay. So whenever I'm doing the two strands, it's hard to get those through a number 10. So I typically will, you know, drop down to a size eight um, or go up to a size eight uh, so that I can thread a little bit more easily with the two strands. Okay. So for the neck, it's a blind stitch that we want to use. Um, and usually I'll start kind of at the back of the neck. And, and so this stitch is going to be going from one, from back and forth, from the head, from the body to the head, to the body to the head. And the, all the stitches are going to be sort of parallel to the opening. So um, you can see, I'm going to do the first couple of stitches loosely so you can see what's happening with the thread. You're creating sort of this ladder. Um, sometimes people call this a ladder stitch or a, bl or a blind stitch, invisible stitch. Um, see how it's sort of creating these um, rungs of a ladder. And then you can draw this all in and the stitch, um, so it's basically a running stitch from the wrong side. Um, so it's drawing those, these two, like you start here and then the seam kind of does this um, because of the way it's being, um, the way it's stitched. Okay, so then I'm on the body side, back to the head side. And you don't really have to here um, um, match up the seams, like you could have the head tilted one side or the other, uh, but you can also match up the seams. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? That I was thinking that I had done on the little dragon one was add a pipe cleaner in here. So you can, here, let's do it right now or we're half stitched. Let's just do it. Um, hold on. Okay, here's a pipe cleaner. I'm gonna cut a little piece off. And so I'm gonna do the folded side. I'm just gonna chop down in here. Slide that baby down a little bit. And then I think this is a little longer than I want here. Just gonna cut some of that off and fold this down. You always wanna fold down the pipe cleaner before you stick it into the head or the cavity because it, um, the sharp ends of the pipe cleaner will, um, will um, want to um, catch on the wool. So this is slightly awkward. You would really wanna do this before, but there we go. So now that's up there and now I'll be able to bend, now I'll be able to bend the neck. Okay. And we can go back and finish our little ladder stitch. This one's kind of a fun one. I mean, a lot of the other animals are, are a lot more elaborate, but, um, but uh, these remind me, I don't know if you ever had as a kid or your kids had, um, it was like a, I think it was like a play school thing and it was like this little log it was like a little fabric log I see Jessica you're shaking your head and it had these like little what were they like beavers or I 
what they were that lived in this log. It probably was beavers. Um, but they, they had these little arms and they, they were squeaky and they had this little log house. It was so cute. Um, anyway, but it kind of reminds me of that, like these simple little animals that can be turned into other things. Um, okay, so um, I just went around once, but usually I'll go around twice around the neck. Um, just for extra strength. But for now, I'm just going to do the one time on this sample. Okay, so there's my knot. And then this is probably not going to show much here, but um, to hide a knot on the surface, this hole is, I think you can see that hole, that's like right behind my knot. I can put my needle back in there, right behind the knot. And then when I do this, um, I can pop the knot through. And then, so now my knot, my finishing knot is on the inside of the fabric. All right, so that is that. So then we need to finish stuffing, um, stuffing the body here with a little more, more action, a little action. Um, and then, um, and then I've got the base of this guy. I put a little piece of cardboard. So I have, um, I was going to do green for the base of this one. Um, oops. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, my tacky glue, my favorite little glue there, and um, glue that cardboard to the felt so we have a nice base so this guy won't tip over. Why did one of the heads you had have a snap on the bottom of it? Aha, good question. Um, so I was trying some different things um, and I was gonna show you guys that too. So I, um, I've been meaning to get some of those, um, what are they, like the doll hint, like arm hinges. It's like two little discs and a cotter pin. Um, but I was like, what do I have that would do, have that same function at home? And I thought, oh, it'd be kind of fun to put snaps in there and then, and then their heads could pivot um, because of the snaps. So I did some of them um, with, this is a, I just measured this snap earlier. I think it was like 12 centimeters across. Um, and so I left, um, I left the hole like this, and I did a tiny little running stitch around the hole just to draw it in a tiny bit. Um, and then I covered the hole with the snap and stitched it in place. Um, and I, I just thought kids would think that was kind of funny too, like if they had a whole bunch of these and they could change the heads with the bodies, um, you know, kids might really think that was funny. But then I was like, maybe it's too violent. <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't be popping the heads off your animals. I don't know. Anyway, but it was an idea and it was a way to make this pivoting, you know, pivoting head on the body. Um, and, um, and so I didn't um, completely close up the holes. Um, but, um, but if you, you can't really see, but like I can see through to the stuffing through these, the little holes here. Um, but I did just do that little running stitch to tighten up the hole and then plop the snap on top of it. Um, you definitely want to do a bunch of stitches um, around in each of the holes if you are going to do this because if kids really get the hang of it and they love popping the heads off then um, then that's definitely that's you know could be a weak spot um, you know with with too much head popping but um, but anyhow but give that a whirl that's another fun idea um, so, so Cynthia yes. I have a teddy, I have a teddy bear book I think uh -huh. Margaret Hutchins, and she does the same thing, and she yeah. uses snap for the arms as well. Oh, does she? Yeah. 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 So the arms and the head work. Um, oh, that's so great. Well, and I they really work very well. Yeah. I mean, I thought that it was a, I thought that it would be a fun thing, and I thought it, like, as a kid, I probably would have really liked that. Um, but um, yeah. Oh, good. Well, that's, that's, it's happening in other places. Other people are doing that too. That's great. Um, all right, so actually, that teddy bear book is fifty years old. Is it? Well, then they've been, been happening for a long time. Then, right? So. <laughs> yeah. I haven't. Um, I haven't really made any traditional teddy bears. Um, so, um, but I should probably get a couple of those books and see what 
see what other you know people have done. Um, okay, so now um, I think we're pretty well stuffed here. It's nice and firm. And we've got our wire in here, so you can bend the head down and kind of tilt it. Um, all right, and then, so then what we wanna do is take our, uh, we have two pieces here. We have one that's a little bit larger and a bit smaller. Um, and then this guy gets glued right in the center. So let me just get a little bit of this. So this will give us a nice flat base. Um, and really what you want is just enough around that, the edge of this circle that you can stitch it on. And I did not actually, I knew that my cardboard circle was the right size, but I think I may have made, in, in your pattern, I think you're gonna find that this is just a hair too big. So I can go back and make an adjustment on the pattern or you guys can just kind of give it a tiny haircut here. Would you put a, the nickel in there like you did with the seal? Um, you could, you could definitely put a weight in there, but this guy's pretty well balanced. So um, uh, the seal was um, really imbalanced, right? Because he had a big head and he was kind of the way he was sitting. Oh, hey, <laughs> you've got your reindeer going. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay, so yeah, so that needed probably a tiny bit of trimming. So maybe I'll adjust that pattern and re repost it. But, okay, so then... Um, so on these guys, I did some, um, I was trying out different, different stitches. Um, usually I would just use a whip stitch, but then I thought, oh, maybe I'll use a buttonhole stitch around here. Maybe I'll mix up the thread colors. Um, what else did I do? So I did, this one was just a whip stitch. This one, I guess both of these, I used the body color as the stitching. So let's do that. So I'll use the blue color as my stitching on this one. And where is that thread? Hmm. Oh, here it is. It's in my lap. Okay. All right. So we'll go around and stitch that on. So just throw out any questions as I'm doing this, if you think of anything. I don't think we're, I, I feel like we're pretty well along the way here for so um i just put two threads on this i don't think it's really necessary you could do one or two if you're doing a decorative stitch that you want to show uh, maybe two is in order um but uh i'm just gonna do i'll do a buttonhole stitch here since we've already seen the whip stitch and if anybody wants to see that so um so their buttonhole stitch and blanket stitch are very similar um, buttonhole stitch. When you make the stitch, you're coming sort of, um, I guess, right to left. And I, us I usually think of that as the back side of the stitch. But I don't know if you can see this, but this thread, there's like a twist um, in this thread, and that forms a little pearl. And so each of those stitches will lock down. The blanket stitch is going through the opposite way. Let me do a couple more of the buttonhole. So you can see, so it's going through this way. And each, um, and it's just, it's like such a better stitch. <laughs> but then the blanket stitch, just so you know the difference and what to look for is, um, is going through the opposite way, right? So it's going through this way. And when I do that, you can see that um, there's no, there's no twist at all. Like my thread is just coming through the hole. And so those stitches will not lock down and, and, um, and you'll have to keep tension on it the whole time. Um, so that's why I like the buttonhole because it each stitch kind of grabs and locks down and you don't have to constantly keep tension on your stitches. Um, that's what I use for like the decorative stitch on Felix's jacket. Um, I usually reserve it for decorative stitches, but some people like to use it for all their um, all their seams, and that's that's fine too. Um, okay, so then we'll just go around here. Cynthia, it's, it's Juliet. I have a. Hey. I have a yes. question. I was making the Christmas mice. Um, yes. Two weeks back. Uh huh. And 
I was using the two millimeter glass eyes. Yep. And gosh darn it, if the eyes just didn't keep breaking because I was trying to force them through my needles. And I got the smallest oh. needle I could use that actually my eyeballs could see to thread. And I can't tell you how many glass eyes I broke. Oh like, no. I used my needle nose pliers to pull them through. I was just having a devil of a time. Really? I, I was using the John James um, embroidery needles, but I don't know. Huh. I think, did I say two or three millimeters? The only ones that I have, um, I only, um, the only ones I have are three millimeter. They were the ones that you recommended, and actually, I think. And I they were, and, and you found them in two millimeter? Yeah, they're, they're yes, right. that, that is, that's what they look like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, and, has, and you have them in two millimeter. Okay, so mine are in three. Um, and I recommended two because I thought they would be, be a little bit smaller. I think I thought mine were a little bit too big. Um, so, do you have any beading needles? No. Okay, what about number 10 needles? Um, I have no clue. Does that come? With, does that does that come in your kit? You know, when you buy uh, your your little. I, I started to. Uh, I have. So I think I'm. Um, I don't think I have anything listed yet, but I've been meaning to start sell to sell needles, and I have number eights and number tens in stock. But let me um let me just put um. Let me put a number 10 in an envelope and pop it in the mail to you. Will you text me? Do I have your, I have your address in Patreon, right? Yes, you yeah. You yeah. Let me just send, let me just send you one. And, oh, um, yeah. and let me write, let me write that down somewhere. Um, because that is probably the, I think the number 10 will go through just fine. Um, but let me, I just need a sticky note to remind myself. Okay. I Juliet. used number 10 needles. Yeah. on my two millimeter eyes and it worked perfectly. There was oh, no oh, problem. Oh, great. Good. Yeah. Good. So, Yay, Mika. <laughs> <laughs> the ones, let me see if I have them here. The ones that I had that I used look like this. Oh, okay, Bowen, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're Bowen, let's see, patch, it says patchwork and quilting, um, but they're size 10. Size 10. And they work just fine great good 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 yeah yeah it's it is tricky when you get into smaller um you know when you get into smaller sizes like for eyes and things like that some things can get a little tight i have um in the plastic eyes that i hold on i'm gonna tape this up to my wall so it's not, not get thrown away somehow um does anybody else need a number 10 to try out or is everybody good okay We'll send one that way anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, anyhow, so the size, the plastic eyes are a little more forgiving um, because they, e even if the needle's tight, it'll still go through. Um, but yeah, the, when things get uh, really small, the glass ones are a little less. They just, they need what they need. Otherwise they break. I have some tiny little beads that I use for things like that too. The um, beading needles are, are also helpful, but they are, they're harder to thread than the number 10s because they're, um, uh, they're shaft. The beading needles, the shaft is exactly the same width as the hole. So they, it, they get really, really fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so. We are getting through this, and then we're going to be on to um, to eyes and ears. And um, so I've got a bunch of other little heads, um, so we I can show you how to sew on the different styles of ears. And I've got those guys all cut out and ready to rock. All right. Has anybody, um, I, so I was talking earlier about um, like Zoom and like meetings versus webinars. Have you guys, have you guys ever done, has anybody ever done a Zoom webinar? Do you know the difference? I, I think, have. what's that, wait, who said that? Karen, I have not. You, you have not, yeah. It's, I, it, they're meant for like really large groups and I think you can do like, 
and I was just wondering how different it was if I would be able to see everybody um, all at once um, with the meetings it's um, it's they're not you know meant for such large groups and so I think you can't see I, everybody I don't think you can still see everybody but oh, no? the difference is that everybody is muted and oh. it's more just a chat and with a webinar you usually have like a secondary person who's monitoring the chat box to yeah to address questions and things like that mm -hmm. oh well this is better then isn't it um, can i ask you while i have myself <laughs> unmuted how do you store your different threads you know once you've taken and cut them you know to you've opened up the skein and you've got them in pieces what do you how do you store them so i like to do this so i have um so if this is kind of a bundle that's all been broken down um let me see if i can i'm gonna move my camera up a little more so that we can see wait is that there we go we can see a little more of my 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 now very messy desktop okay so here's my length and then i take um you know there's that little tag at the bottom so I take the little tag and I just cut off the number. The tag is usually like this long, you know, but then it, 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 it's a little cumbersome. So I just cut off the number so I know what number it is and I can keep track of that. Mm -hmm. and, then I take, um, and then I take my thread and I double it like that. So my number is at the loop end. And then I make a slip knot. And I try and I try to make the ends like if I make this end and this end equal, sometimes it gets harder to separate them. But if I leave them un, at unequal lengths like that, mm -hmm. then it's always easy to pull it apart and um, and start to pull my threads from it. And then I hang them. Um, then I hang them on rings. This one usually I do it by color. This one's a bit of a mess right now. But then I hang it on these guys. Nice. These little, um, and so I have a little, um, I have a little, here, I'll take this off and show you. Um, so I have a, like a little wall of hooks. Uh -huh. So I just kind of keep them all like that. And then, um, and then, there, you know, and every now and then I have to, I have to go through and organize them, and, you know, um, kind of put them back in order. But, um, but it's a, it's a really handy way to keep them. Um, and the slip knot is really great for, um, um, you know, keeping everything. I've been keeping mine like this and it's makes it, the thread get really kinky, you know, when you go to, um, to use them. So thank you. Thank you. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I know oh, yeah. you had posted something about it and I just couldn't remember. Yeah, you. yeah. They, they do sell, the, when you said it's kinky, you're putting it on the little cards. Exactly. It's like yeah. this little, um, yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I like the idea of those. And sometimes you see people with like their box and all the colors are in a rainbow and you think, my goodness, that's so lovely. But, yeah. um, but I don't like sewing with it when it's all wrinkled like that. Yeah. But that would be a place like if you really wanted to go, you know, over the top, do that thing with the waxing of the thread and iron it and like, but this yeah. is like, Maybe it's really more meant, maybe people really only do that for tailoring, but sometimes I get a little nerd, nerd, I nerd out on things like this and I like to try new things. Well, and would that actually make the thread a little stronger? I don't feel like I'm being overly aggressive, but I have, as I've been doing this, I have broken my thread like six times. Um, mm, it will make it stronger. Let's try it. Let's do it right now. Why not? I've got some right here and I've got the iron and, um, and I'm just going to see what the difference is. Okay, so I've got, um, I'll just do, maybe I'll do it with these two short pieces. And we'll just kind of see what the strength is like. Uh, where'd my wax go? Here it is. And basically, tailoring wax is the same, it's just beeswax, right? It's just beeswax, but I have noticed that, um, here, wait a second, let me re regroup. I've got to move my, okay, there we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> see if we can get more in focus there we go um so yeah it's just beeswax but the um but i think there might be some kind of additive that i mean this is much softer um than than the tea lights um 
that I'm right. that I have. Let's see if I can see. Here's a tea light. So um, it's like when I I can't squish right. into this at all, but I can sort of, you know, really, yeah, squish that. And I and I think it just um, they may have put something in it. Yeah, I don't know why it's better, but I think it is. <laughs> maybe, maybe because it came in this nice little box. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like, I like some good, I like me some good packaging. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to use this. Wait, what am I going to use? I need a little piece of paper. Hold on a minute. Let's see. Okay. So this is just read about this. So we're learning together. Um, okay. So I've got my piece of thread here and then my iron hot? Not quite. Another. We're getting there. All right. So, oh yeah. So now I can see the wax kind of, um, it's coming through a little bit there. So then you get this, um, I mean, it's just like, it like holds its own. Mm-hmm. It's really, really nice. And I think it just, you won't get any of those tangles. And okay, so it does break, but not as easily. Not okay. that you could really tell by that, um, that, that little example I just gave, but, um, but I definitely felt like it took more force to break the waxed one. And I also think okay. that what, what's gonna happen with that is that, you know, with every pass of your needle going through the felt, it, um, it degrades the, 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 the thread a little bit. And right. so if you put that wax on it, you'll get less of that degrading. So um, it'll just make it stronger for longer. Okay. Um, okay. So does, um, does go ahead. Ironing, does ironing it like that take the beeswax off of it, basically? It takes some of it off. So, okay. um, so I think it, it takes the excess off of it, but it also like impregnates the, the thread with the wax. Um, I was doing, I did a, like a, a bag class recently with a, like a really, like a three millimeter felt and we waxed all of our thread for that, but we were using six strands plied together and we were waxing that. Um, and it really made a huge difference. Um, it, we just didn't get any, like, cause you would, if I didn't do it, threads, various threads would break midway, you know, um, from the bundle. Um, uh, I just totally lost my train of thought. Um, anyway, uh, but the waxing, but the ironing of it, um, gets off. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, so the first few stitches that we would do, you would get like a little bit of the wax would kind of peel, peel, mm -hmm. peel is not the right word, but like kind of scoot off the surface. And in the first couple of holes, you would see a little residue of wax. But I think that the, the ironing it will take all of that excess off so that you don't get any of that action mm -hmm. happening. Um, all right, where are we? Where are we? We are on, um, well, let's do arms. Let's do arms first. Okay, so here's, um, here's where we are on this guy. And then here is what our arm piece looks like. And we're just gonna fold that in half and stitch the smaller end is the hand and the bigger end is the shoulder. And we're gonna stitch um, around, leaving a hole open um, up here. So this guy is basically at that point. And I think I really need to go a little bit further in here. Hold on, I'm gonna go to, oh, my iPad is set on slow motion. No wonder I'm having trouble. Let's try this. Okay. Oh my gosh, I think that's a lot better. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so we're, um, so we're up here. Um, I've got the stitching done around the, the sort of the paw and up to the shoulder, and then we need some pipe cleaner. So I'm using the extra plush one on here um, that I sell in the shop. Um, but if you don't have 
um, the extra plush pipe cleaner, you can just use whatever you've got and add a little extra stuffing in there. Um, so I folded the end that goes into the paw, and then I'm gonna kind of, kind of look at that and then fold the top end here so it goes up into the shoulder and then trim it so there's a little gap between the fold um, like at the wrist there's kind of a little gap because that's the thinnest point in the um in the arm there so then when we're stitching these on i want to make sure i have um have a little gap in here too so i'm putting the uh, skewer in here so that um, i'll be able to stitch through this spot on the arm when I'm done to attach it to the body. So then that just slides right in here. And, um, and basically it's, it's almost completely stuffed. If you wanna add a tiny bit more stuffing in there, you certainly can, just a little bit in the shoulder. So let's just take a tiny little fluffy bit and let's try our Deborah Willis tool again, because this is probably a great spot for it. Yeah, this is really nice actually for the for these narrow bits. Mm, I like that. Okay. Maybe one one bit on the opposite side, right at the shoulder. Awesome. Okay. And then if there's anything here that's just in your way that didn't quite get in, you can snip it off. Um, and then finish up, finish up the shoulder. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Cynthia, this is Karen. Oh, hey, Karen. Uh, I came in late. My daughter came in for a visit, so and then I had to take them back to their house. But yeah. um, I'm, I'm working on the head now. Do we huh? all do? I already have done the um, um, uh, <laughs> the V uh, darts. Okay. And I've sewn around, but do I sew all of them except for the neck and then invert it, reverse it, or do I leave? Um, yeah, so so um, you've done these two darts on the back of the head, yeah. right? And yeah. did you do the chin, the dart that makes up the chin? Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, so here's our pattern. So that's the chin dart, that's the back of the head dart, and then you'll stitch, um, so, so then you'll stitch from here on the same side, and then you're going to turn the head and you leave this part open on the back, like right here. Okay. Leave that open so that you have a bigger hole to turn than just the neck. Okay, great. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, okay. So that's what you do for the arms. You're going to make both arms um, like that and then they get stitched on simultaneously. So I attached them. Um, let's see. I think I was about uh maybe like three eighths of an inch down quarter of an inch three eighths of an inch down from the neck is probably a good spot so um i left that i made that little gap in my pipe cleaner so that i'd be able to stitch through here so those are just going to get stitched to the sides of the body um right about here and you can stitch them on together at the same time um i don't have this second one stitched so i'm going to mock it up uh, for us and just kind of based based here because we want to get on to the um, the ears and eyes and stuff and I think this is pretty pretty basic so we'll just pretend that one's done and um, and we'll stitch these both on oh you know what I could do here we go ha <laughs> let's just pop an arm off this guy there we go now we've got two arms Perfect. Okay. There we go. Great. All right. So here is a good spot for the long um, for the long darner um, because that gives you enough length to get all the way through the body. Sometimes you know with a with a shorter needle you can get through, but you might want to use pliers to to pull it all the way through. Um, 
All right, and I'm going to use two strands on this one. I'm just going to split it in half to get the length I want. Okay. And get a little knot. All right. All right. So, um, that looks like it's a little too far back. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to start my knot um, underneath one of the arms so it gets hidden. And then I'm going to come out here and go back in and then come out on the other arm. Oops. There we go. Got to rethread. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to try to come out. Um, so we'll have like maybe like a, I don't know, like a little sixteenth of an inch stitch kind of across that's like, um, hey, let's see if we can do a couple of these and then uh, get close up. So um, you wanna go back and forth um, several times. I'm not sure that I ever really count. Um, I just kind of get the feel for how many feels right and what feels snug enough. Um, so let's see if we can see the marking there. Um, right, so we've got like just a short little, a short little stitch here um, so that the arm can still, you know, not so big that the arm can't pivot. Um, but let's see, um, I'm gonna say four times minimum, maybe six. <laughs> Give that a go and see how long the arms stay on. <laughs> we have kids playing with them. <laughs> they can always be reattached. Okay. Go through one more time here. All right. And then um and then I'm going to come out on the opposite side and I'm going to peel the arm back a little bit so that I can get my knot underneath. All right. All right, there we go. And then we've got our little bendy arms. Okay. Um, and I think I'm, my head is my head is falling off because I was a little hasty about stitching that on, sadly. Oh well. All right. Well, maybe we'll add another little stitch so he doesn't lose his head mid mid demo here. Um, that would be the reason for the two times around in case you have a, in case something kind of gives out. Oh, that's too small. Need to go up to my 10, or my, my excuse me, my eight for sewing with two strands. Okay. All right, so then, um, all right, let me just give a few more security stitches in here so his head doesn't pop off. Go around one more time. Uh, all right, that'll do it. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's do let's do eyes next. 
So I didn't mark on the pattern um, where the eye goes um, because one to get that exact spot, um, I usually have to disassemble a head and, and make the marking um, from where I've put it and I haven't done that yet. But sometimes um, I just measure on the finished one um, where things go. So if we look at this guy, um, we are, if I kind of do a, take my measuring tape and go from sort of the center point of the nose to the bottom of the dart here. Um, the bottom of the eye, oh, sorry, am I off camera? Um, the bottom of the eye is sort of right on that line. Um, so let's take a look at this here. So if we do it on this one, and I hold it here to the bottom of the dart. To the end of the dart. Um, and my eye is it was just above. Is that about right? Let me just see. Okay, so if here's the bottom of my dart. Um, and this is sort of the line from the dart to the nose. So the center, the center of my eye needs to be just about above, just a little bit above that and a little bit back from the dart. So I'll see if I can um, make an adjustment on that pattern. I'll disassemble one of these heads and see if I can add that to the pattern too. But so, um, so often I'll just kind of go, go across the head with my um, skewer and kind of see where the end of the skewer shows up, see if that looks pretty close. Well, let me just scoot this down a little bit. So I use black pins. Ah. Pin it in to try out for different faces because sometimes they, the, where you or other people who put the eyes don't look right. It's totally true, yeah. And I think, you know, it's funny, like I think we all get, if, if the eyes are up too high on the head, you, you kind of look like you have this cross-eyed animal. And if they're, you know, I mean, and then if they're too far apart, I don't know, it's, it, it is this subtle little thing. So yeah, so that's another, that is a great way of doing it to just throw in a couple little pins um, and look at them, you know, and look at your, so like right now, this one looks like it's a little too far down. I like the spot that that one's in. And you can kind of get a sense of, of, of what you like the look of. Um, um, you know, and everybody's going to have their own personal taste. And so I don't think there's like a right or wrong uh, placement necessarily. It's just that like once you find the spot that you think is cute, then, then, you, then you're in good shape. Um, my partner, <laughs> she, so she says sometimes she's like, oh no, that's not quite right. That's not like exactly the way their face is or the, like in, in, you know, nature and um and she's like <laughs> she's like oh it doesn't have to be anatomical it just has to be anatomically cute <laughs> it doesn't have to be you know look like the real thing anyhow so yes so we're going for anatomically cute whatever you think that is that's where the eyes should go all right so on these guys i'm using um the six millimeter eyes um i'm just digging out a few from my drawer here is that a six? That's no, that's a five. Okay, there we go. I've got two six millimeter eyes. Um, if you're making this into a mouse, I don't know, maybe he's got, maybe he's got smaller eyes. Mice have kind of beady little eyes, but if, um, but for the rabbit um, or, well, I guess this is a mouse, isn't it? He's kind of a mouse. No, never mind. I think they're all good with big eyes. Anyway, you can decide. If you like smaller eyes, you can do that too. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use the body color to stitch the eyes on. You can use you can use black. You can use the body color. It almost doesn't matter what color you use because all of this thread gets completely embedded um, into the head, and you never really see it. But um, but I generally I generally use the body color for stitching these on. All right. A little bit of that. And I've got my long darner here um, so I can easily get through the head. All right, 
So for doing the eyes, um, I like to make my knot and bury it um, in the stuffing first. So I go back and forth once before I add the first eye. And then um, part of the reason for making that kind of what seems like a, a ginormous hole is because the, these eyes have a, have a shaft on the back of them. And, and you don't want the eye to sort of flop off the surface of the head, but you want the shaft of the back of the eye to um, get buried into the head. And so without that hole, you can't really achieve that. So, um, so you don't, um, the goal is not to have an eye that's kind of like loose like that to have it sink in and indent just a little bit. So now I'll put the second one on. You can, um, you don't wanna, um, I, I leave them a little loose at first as I'm going back and forth so that I can kind of, um, kind of move the eye out of my way as I'm making the stitches. Um, you don't want your, um, you don't want your needle to pass through the threads of the previous stitches. Um, because they won't pull in right. So I kind of pull them back out of my way like that. And I make sure that I'm still going through the hole. And then I can see, um, oh, my thread's a little off here. There we go. Um, and then I can see the, the shaft as I'm stitching and then I can tighten it all up at the end. So I usually go through three times, two or three times, um, um, to do this, especially if little kids are going to be using them. You know, kids under three shouldn't really be, we shouldn't use this kind of eyes for kids under three, but um, for, you know, if they're a little bit older, you can use these. Um, oh, see, don't know my own strength. Or maybe this thread is old. I'll try that again. Sometimes if thread um, has had too much sun damage or, you know, you can, as thread gets old, it gets weak, it weakens. So, um, so um, in general, keep your thread out of the light. Okay, I'll just go back through a few more times and catch the eyes again. Cynthia, I, I have two questions. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, um, okay, number one, you just said that when you're going through, you, you don't want to go through this previous threads. Do you mean the threads inside the eye? Um, so, um, yeah, so as I'm, the threads that are connecting the eye, so basically, here, let me get a little piece of paper I mean, here. I just want to know, do you mean the threads I inside the eye loop or inside the head? Does that make any sense? Well, there, um, go ahead. Okay, I go think ahead. so. Let me, so if this is our okay. eye, right, and here's our loop, right? So yeah. here's our two yeah. eyes and here's our loop. Mm -hmm. So basically we're going, we're going like this. Right, right, back and forth right. through there. And so if, if somewhere along here, my needle catch it in, in, a, okay. in a second pass or a third pass, if my needle okay. catches this, then, um, then none of these threads are gonna wanna pull freely. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. so, I, so I just kinda like, kinda, I keep using the word peel. What a terrible word for eyes, okay. but I'm anyway. I've done these eyes, I guess I've never had that happen. Yeah, okay. it, it, it doesn't happen to me that often. But that's a good point. But it okay. does happen, yeah, and I, and I have seen um, students get frustrated when they're, they, and they don't know quite why it's not pulling in, but. Right, so that, okay. that's a good point. Okay, yeah. my question is, mm -hmm. I'd like to make some of these for Easter for oh, my perfect. grandchildren. And one of them is um, only a year old. Ah, so okay. I should probably, the other ones are like five and six, four and five and six. So I can do the, the these eyes, but the one year old, I should probably use safety eyes. Yes, with that, with yes, safety eyes. eyes. And you know, so and, and for the one year old, so, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. Why don't you finish and then I'll go. So how would I, I wanna, then I, I've got to position the safety eyes onto the head before I put it together. So can you have some, recommendation about how to position the eyes yes so i'm going to um i'm going to i'm going to disassemble one of the heads that i have after class okay. and um and mark where i have the eye so that you can have okay. that in advance the oh, other great. thing that i might suggest um for a child that young is like this is like just the right size to fit right in their mouth 
yeah. maybe maybe you should scale it up uh -huh. for that I age i don't think that he will probably be left with this to play with it i mean i just want him to be able to yeah to, okay uh, this is not going to be something he's you know That's, i'm sure the par yeah parents will be totally fine no i know i gave i gave a friend of ours one of my penguins that when they first had their baby and the first thing he did was all, like, and I was right. like, Oh right. man, I was just giving him a choking hazard. What a yeah. terrible friend. But anyway, um, yeah, okay. so just, but, but you, you know, but, um, well, but I can also, yeah. okay. I can also, um, here, I'm going to write that on my list too, to, um, so we're going to do eye markings, markings. Um, and, and then I want, I'm going to scale it up too. I'm going to just, I'm going to just do like a, something that's a little bit bigger plus scale. Oh, up. okay. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. And I don't know what that'll mean for the size of safety eyes you're going to want to use if I scale it up, but I'll figure it out. yeah, yeah. But there are lots of options of safety I eyes out there. I have a huge collection of safety eyes. Oh, so I'll it great. Out. Great. Great. Okay. Um, all right. So next, um, so I started to do the tail on, um, on one of these. Um, now you can use, uh, we're all twisted up here. Hold on a minute. Let me de, de, dis, detangle myself here. So, um, so on this guy, I used the, um, the floral wire. Um, so it's super skinny and I gave you guys a pattern that's the right you know, the right thickness for using the, um, so this is the, the skinnier one is the one for using the um, floral wire if you want to do it. But you could also do the mouse's tail out of a, s a slightly thicker. Um, and this, this one fits a, um, a fine pipe cleaner. So I, that, that was another thing too. I just, um, I just got in an order from my, my pipe cleaner folks. Um, so I haven't listed it yet, but I'll have both of these sizes available. So right now I only have the extra plush ones, but these ones will be available soon. And if you want them, just ask and Laura will pack some up for you. Um, how, long are, how long are those pipe cleaners? Because I think I have some of those. To find oh them. yeah, 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 yeah. So these are, um, these, are, these are 12 inches. Oh, they're also 12 inches. Okay. They're also 12 inches, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but I, I was using most of these extra plush ones cause I'm using them now to stuff a lot of the legs in the kits. So I stopped carrying these and then I realized, oh, it's really handy to have both. So, um, okay. so anyhow that, so if you need some, sh shoot Laura a note and I'll have those posted soon, I hope. Um, okay. So, um, but for the mouse, you can also use the floral wire if you have it. And, um, and same thing, you're just going ahead and stitching up the um up the tail and i'm leaving a little um oops and then it's a good idea to fold this guy down so that you don't have a sharp end um so then you'll do a whip stitch all the way up here and i am um i'm not going to do this whole thing because it's sort of a long a long bit of whip stitching and i think we've all pretty much got that under our belts by now um, but, um, but attaching it to the back, same thing. We want to bend this so it doesn't get caught on the stuffing and we can make a little figure out where you want it to go. I don't think like there's a specific height that's really right necessarily, but where the, where the backside kind of protrudes the most, I kind of made a little hole right next to the, um, seam allowance without puncturing the seam allowance. And then this can just go up inside and you can do a blind stitch around the tail like we did around the neck where you go back and forth, bet forth between the tail and the body and the tail and the body and the tail and the body. So then you'll have your nice little, your little mouse tail um, that can go around the, um, that can go around the arm like that guy. Um, okay. And all right, so next let's do ears. So the mouse ears, um, so let's take a look at them on here. So they kind of, they kind of fold. They have sort of a, it's not quite a right angle, but, um, but what I did was I set the ear on like this. And then I folded this side down a little bit 
like this. And then I sort of brought this corner out. So sort of in the middle of the ear, I brought that out. And then you get this. So this is sort of similar if, if any of you guys have done the, um, um, the dandelion pattern. This is roughly the way the lion ears go on at sort of a little, like a little angle like that. And then for stitching them on, oops, I'm just going to cut that off and reuse that thread from the tail. Uh, for stitching these guys on, it's sort of like there are all these funny ways of modifying um, the whip stitch. Um, so this is sort of like a modified version of the whip stitch where I want to stitch something kind of vertically off of a surface. So, um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pop my beginning knot through. So I've got a tiny little knot there and I'm just going to pop that through the surface. And then, um, and then I'm going to move this pin a little bit so I can get in there where I want my first stitch to be. So I'm basically whip stitching around here. Let's zoom in again too. Okay, so I'm basically whip stitching this edge down to the surface of my head. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the surface and then I'm gonna go back through the ear this way and then I'm going to grab a little bit of the surface. So we'll just go back and forth. And now I can get rid of this pin altogether. That first pin has done its job. So just like that, back and forth, um, grabbing the ear as you go. And, um, and same thing on this, like we were just talking about with the eyes where it's like if you pin both ears on and you find the spot that you think is cutest, then that's the right spot. I mean, like they can be moved around um, slightly different places and it'll give, give him sort of different personalities. You know, if you think about how your dog's ears move when they're looking at you in different ways, um, sometimes they're kind of pushed back, sometimes they're, you know, kind of down. And so I just play around with them and I figure out what I think looks looks cute for whatever mood I'm in or whatever I mood the an I want the animal to be in. Um, so same, same, same here. And then I can probably get rid of this guy so I can get my last couple stitches in. And um, I keep catching it on the arms, so watch out for that. Maybe you want to stitch ears on before you do arms. Just Some things there's an order to, and some things you're like, oh, that doesn't really matter, except it's, there's less to catch if I do this thing before that thing. All right, so there we go. So down our ear is, has its kind of its little bentness to it. All right, so that's how we do our mouse ears. And, um, okay, and then we'll do, oops, did I bonk this? Okay, all right, so let's see, is that, so it looks like I did these ones a little bit higher, but that's okay too. So these guys, his ears almost remind me a little bit of, um, I mean, they're not pointed, but these, what are those, um, the fennec, do you guys know that it's like a fennec fox? I think it's like this, African, they're those little white foxes that have those really like, somehow he sort of has that feeling to me. They're a little bit, this one came out a little bit lower down. So anyway, just fool around with where the ears are placed and, and figure out what you like. Let's see what they look like from the side. Yeah, and his head is a little bit more, you know, each one has its own personality. It gets stuffed slightly differently. Uh, his head is a little more squat than this guy's, than this guy's head came out. Um, all right. So next, if you have it and you want to, um, you can go around the eye with the eyeliner. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, I, I use these 
um, the 005 size a lot with the micron pens, but they do wear out a bit faster than I'd like them to. Um, so you can go up, like this is an 02, which is probably okay as well. Let's try one in each and see what the difference is. Um, all right, so usually I just kind of angle the pen around here to get a little eyeliner. Um, and then I do, um, and then I kind of do a little kind of hoozy back at the back of the eye here and a little hoozy here at the front of the eye here. Um, and it gives it a little bit of that almond shaped kind of eyeliner, which is kind of sweet. All right, so that's the, um, that's the 005. And that's a pretty fresh one. And let's just see about the O2. Um, it might not be. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little bit harder to get the the nib right next to the edge. But if you really kind of lay it down at a at a sharp angle as you're drawing, um, you can kind of tuck it under there. I think this pen is not quite as. Um, I think it's a little older, so it's not going on as dark, but all right, same and same deal. So really, you know, you can use a couple of the different sizes, but some of them get too thick um, to use. Okay, so there we go. So there's our second eye. So that's pretty good too. They're pretty similar. The 005 was a fresher pen. Um, okay, all right. So that's the eyeliner. And then our nose, Oh, what is this color? This color is one of my favorite colors for um, for noses. It's um, it's not black and it's not like a chocolatey brown. Hold on, I think I have a cone of it and I can tell you what the color number is. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, oops. So this is color number 5628. And this is like one of my, it's just, I don't know why, but this color, brown, black, whatever the heck it is, um, always looks good for noses. Um, okay, so we'll do, so I'm gonna do the nose on this with just a single strand. Sometimes, um, sometimes I use a double strand, but, but you can go, it can get like, it can get a little thick without, um, it can get a little, I don't know, out of control. <laughs> I like, I like my nose to stay in control. Okay, let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna do a nice small knot at the end so I can pop it through the cheek. All right. So I'm gonna start kind of over here somewhere and just pop. And then I'm making the nose kind of right where the that um, right where the dart at the top the top head dart, like right right here. Okay. And I'm just going to graduate. Uh, I'm not I'm not graduate, but I'm just going to lay each stitch down. I'm going to make it the same width uh, all the way down. Maybe do four or five stitches for the nose. Maybe it's a quarter of an inch across. This one looks a little smaller than, than that guy. That nose is quite a bit bigger. So um, maybe I could have gone wider here, but you can decide what you like the look of. And then um, as you get, um, if, after you get the nose to the size that you want, you can come down at an angle. Let's zoom in here again. You can come down at an angle to get that little vertical part to the mouth. So I'm going to bring this up here and then it'll just, I'll reposition it for doing the next step. So I'm going to come back down and do um, to one side. Oops. Okay, back down to one side and then we'll come up to the middle again. Oops, get back on camera. Um, and then we can do this side. 
so we're going to come out here and then go back to the middle again and come out here and then that's the last stitch and we'll just come out to the side and hide or not oh and he's got kind of a funny smirk oh that's all right so sometimes i would like take out the last stitch and kind of like rework rework the smirk but um but i'm gonna leave it today <laughs> we'll do we'll do a little just one knot here and then pop it through so i'm going right back behind that knot and and popping it through and then i'll cut this off flush okay all right so he is basically done. We did the we did the tail, although we didn't do you know finish putting it on, and we've got a second ear that needs to go on. But I thought maybe what we should do is move on to some of the other animals, um, and just kind of take a look at their ears um, and details, just to sort of take because they're they attach a little bit differently. So um, okay, so here is um, okay. So here's the dog tail. Okay, and this was going to be my dog, but we didn't get the, I didn't put the head on this one yet. So that's the dog. And then the tail, I would put a little wire in here. I'll do a little pipe cleaner again. Let's use this piece, that's long enough. And this is an extra plush piece, which is probably just plenty of stuffing for the whole tail. I don't think it needs much more than that. I can get that right up into the end. Mm, it could, I suppose it could use a little bit more. Maybe we'll put a little bit more in there. Not too much. A little bit. Okay. Let's use this fun little stuffing tool one more time. Oh yeah, that's so nice. That really does get up in there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that thing's awesome. Okay. So our little tail. So then this guy would be attached the same way as the uh, mouse tail. If you need to, if this gets a little tricky to get your, um, to get the wire up into the body, I often will do this little trimming thing, which you've seen in some of the other videos to just um, make that piece a little easier to get inside. So same thing, this will attach um, just the same way as the mouse did. We'll just make a little hole in the back side here with our skewer next to the seam line. Oh, somebody's joining us. Oh, maybe Karen popped out. Okay. All right, so that'll go right inside like this. And then the same sort of attachment, we'll do the blind stitch on this and then he can have a nice little bendy tail. So that's our little dog tail. And then our dog ears are, okay, so here's one, let me get the two pattern pieces. Dog, okay, here are the dog ears. Okay, let's get rid of some of this action. It's getting a little crowded over here. Okay, all right, so here are the dog ears. And if you face them this way, so there's sort of one that has like a funny point and one that has a little curve. So if you put the point this way and fold the pointed side back a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch, then you'll get this little fold in the back of the ear. So these guys are just gonna get attached flat and that fold goes towards the back here. And again, you can just find the spot on their heads that you feel like is the cutest. I kind of like them going back like this. My dog does this with her ears a lot where she's right over here. Hey, Nico Pico, do you wanna say hi? Do you wanna say hi? Come here, come here, come on, come on, up, up, up. Oh, this is, this is the inspiration. There she is, oh, she's so good. She's so good. Okay, that's it, that was it. Okay, 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so cute ears um, go on kind of like that on the back of his little head. Um, and then um, I'm going to stitch these on with, because this color is very difficult to see, I'm going to stitch these on with a light color so we can just kind of see what that looks like. Um, not because you want to use a light color, but because you'll be able to see it better. These darker colors are hard to see on the um, on screen, I think. All right, so. So I would come in somewhere here where I can pop the needle, uh, pop my, uh, excuse me, pop the knot through. Now, if you're having trouble, this knot, I think I made it just a tiny bit too big um, for it to want to pop through very well. But you can take the end of a skewer somewhere. Hmm. Where did my skewer go? You can take the end of a skewer or an awl. Neither of these things are revealing themselves to me right now. Um, but you can make a little hole, there we go, and pop it through manually if you need to. Okay, so for this, so now I'm through the head and um, and the ed corner of the ear, and I'm gonna do a stitch like this where I go parallel, let's go, where I go parallel to the ear edge, and then I come back and I grab the ear this way, and then I go parallel again, like that. And so you'll get these little sort of tick marks across the top of the ear in the, obviously you wanna use thread that matches if you can. Um, and this is sort of like a hybrid of like a blind stitch and a whip stitch, you know? Um, and uh, when you're on three dimensional things or, you know, doing legs or going under an armpit or something on some of the other animals, um, when you kind of, if I stitch forward in one direction and then back in another direction, I can get around whatever the weird shape is. So, um, so these stitches in matching thread would look a lot nicer than they do right now, but that's okay. Um, it's easier for everybody to see. Okay, so then, um, then we'll do another knot. Is that somebody coming in or going out? I think that's somebody going out. All right, so that is how we attach the dog's ears. Um, and they have that little fold in the back. Okay, and then who else do we have a different ear on? Um, oh, and then the rabbit ears. Oh yeah, here we go. These guys are a lot, are a bit um, simpler. And they go on the same way. This guy's ears and the rabbit's ears are the same. They have, um, they get a little pinch. See how I did like three little whip stitches um, right um, in the center like that. And then I made this little, the way the ear kind of has a tilt to it, I made that come forward. So this is attached the same way that that dog ear is attached. It's just, um, it's just that it has that pinch in it instead of the fold. And the rabbit ear is exactly the same. Um, same thing, we have a little pinch in it with a couple of stitches and then it just gets applied to the head like this. Okay. And this. And, we'll st and we would stitch it on in the same way that we just attached the dog eyes. Um, now also for this guy, um, his ears were kind of sticking straight out, which, which was cute, but I wanted them to, um, oh, let's bring him down a little bit, get him in front of the camera. Um, I wanted them to kind of hold this little curved kind of look like that. So I did my little hairspray thing. Um, and then I kind of held them in place as they were drying. So they would curve down a little bit like this. Um, okay, so I think we've hit almost everything. The only thing left that I 
didn't do was the um, adding this tail um, to the end of the wire. So this is just a circle and I've gathered, if we have our circle here, I've gathered around the edge. Oops, let me just get away from being zoomed. There we go. There, okay. Ah, okay. All right, so um, if we did a running stitch right around the edge of our um, circle here, um, and then drew it in, um, you could, um, and made a few stitches to tack it in place, you can stuff that to create a little ball like this um, for the end of the dragon. You can also use that same ball to become a rabbit, a rabbit tail um, on the rabbit. And I think, have we covered everything? Does it, do you guys feel like, you got all the animals. Do you have any questions? We can, um, I'm open to questions. We can talk for however long if you guys have other questions about different projects or any more questions about this or whatever. So I'm noticing your rabbit ears, you have the snap that you did, you know, uh, so then if you have like a scarf around whatever it, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, so that was one of the things that, that um, I didn't love about the snap it was that I felt like it was visible, yeah. but, um, but I thought that it was fun enough that, that it was, um, it was a thing that kids would really like. And that was why I started thinking about scarves. So um, these are a bunch of my, my mom every now, every now and then when I visit her, she has like a little pile of mini animal scarves for me. So she, so she, she made, a, she made a whole bunch of them at Christmas. So, um, yeah, so I love, and I love that. And you can just, you know, you can just use a piece of felt like I did the little Christmas one, mm -hmm. which, um, here, um, that little guy, and then they can, ch then they can change out these little, um, change out their little scarves interchangeable um, to match the outfit exactly and i did also think too like on these bodies it might be really fun to put little pockets on them before you've stuffed them and then their little hands could go into pockets um i made all these different colors like they were wearing an outfit but um you could also make them the color of the body um but um but anyway i just thought it would be very cute if they had little pockets too i didn't that was sort of late in the game i thought of that mm -hmm. um but um yeah Okay, what else? Cynthia, I got a question about the uh, rabbit coats. <laughs> the rabbit coats, oh, yeah. for, for um, our regular class? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, okay, so, well, everybody's gonna get to hear about this. Um, this is Beth, she's taking, I have, um, I, have um, I teach at the Handicraft Club in Providence, which is a really fun place. And if you guys, if anybody's interested in taking classes there, um, to just try it out, you can, I think, I think there's like a, for joining and doing something once a year with the club, there's, it's, it's the, it's a minimal thing, but it's a membership club. So anyway, but we're doing a lot of stuff online after COVID. So right now um, I'm teaching another class um, at the club and we are making um, this guy. So let's, so we're making this rabbit. Um, and, um, and we're talking about different painted faces and, and, and various other things. And this is the coat that this rabbit wears. So Beth, what's your question? And everyone gets to hear about the coat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope it's not an inappropriate time to ask. <laughs> no, why not? I mean, we've got, we've got a bunch of sewing enthusiasts and this is going to be a, a pattern coming up, um, hopefully in the spring. We'll see. <laughs> Um, okay, so what's the question? So, I, you know, I, I got the sleeves on all three sizes and I, I you know, I just thought maybe before um, the next class I could do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just, you know, would I run down the side under the uh, arms? Uh... And then I've got pockets. <laughs> yep, yep, you do have pockets. Um, okay, so you've done, so you haven't done this seam yet? No, no, okay. I have not, nor the okay. back seam. Or this seam? Under the, under the tail, yeah, I haven't done oh, under, this seam. The, under this, the tail. This, yeah, this doesn't get sewn. So this okay. stays open like a little flap. Oh yeah, okay. So that you can get it around his tail. And then, um, 
And then what I did here was I stitched up the side seam. This I did a really, this was sort of a mock-up I did for our class the other day. And I did a okay. really quick stitch in, a, in another color so that everybody could see it well. Um, yep. So I stitched from the bottom edge up to the armpit. And then I took, um, I'm just gonna use a big needle that I've got here. And then I took my needle, which still had thread on it, and I passed it um, through the arm hole right um, yeah. but, right and then i stitched on the outside here so this this seam and this seam use the same piece of thread oh but, i've already i've already done the uh, arm <laughs> oh you already stitched the arm that's okay yeah. too no no yeah. that's okay that's okay, okay. That, that this is just this is just an efficient way of of using the same thread for both yeah, and stitching I, one I on the inside and one on the outside okay um so that's yeah so that's that don't stitch this seam so this is kind of a, a um, stitch on the inside right i i i have gotten to the point where i really like wherever i can possibly stitch on the inside i like stitching okay. on the inside um okay. but things like the arm are very difficult to turn although mm -hmm. some people use their hemostats and they and they and they turn skinny arms like that mm -hmm. but um but i but i didn't want to you know, I didn't want to force everybody to do that. So I, tr I came up with this way to stitch inside here and stitch outside there with the same thread. And where would you place the pocket? Ah, place the pocket. Okay, so this is, um, this is a dog ear. This is not a pocket, but it's very similar. Um, the, <laughs> I the, noticed that. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> um, so the pocket has a slope on this that, here, let's look at it here. Right, so here's our pocket and our dog ear. So the pocket has a slope that goes up towards the front and the center this angled one on your side seam and then match the point to the side seam. And that is stitched about, the bottom of that pocket is about three eighths of an inch up from the bottom, from the bottom hem. And that'll be, and that'll be about the right height so that um, he can just put his paws in his pocket. Let's see. Um, so there we go. Uh, okay. And 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 then if you want to at the so top of the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it will be coming. It will be coming soonish. <laughs> in the class, we're doing it in three sizes. So I've got it in. Um, I've got it in. Uh, one hundred percent, like sixty-five and seventy-five percent. So you can have like babies <laughs> uh, what was that Beth no and then I and and so you're doing the running stitch around or the whip stitch and then at the end if you wish to do chain stitch just above that so I you... ended up doing I ended up doing the chain stitch first and 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 trying to keep it um, an equal distance away from the edge as I was making my chain stitch right and then okay. after I did my whip stitch and I, I, I spaced my whip stitch so it was it it matched up with each link of the chain stitch. Well, that's fancy. It's very <laughs> fancy. <laughs> We're all about fancy here. Um, what, what was the name of the, of the shop? Oh, the, where I teach? Yes. Um, so it's a it's a it's a really neat place. It's called the Handicraft Club. It's in Providence. It's a women's craft, hand craft club, and it's been around since 1904, I think. Um, and we're we're located in a historic house um, in in down right by kind of between RISD and Brown. Um, and but a lot of people are doing on a lot of our teachers are doing online classes now. And um, and I was talking to uh, our president a couple weeks ago because I had a few people who had said they wanted they knew that I was teaching there and they wanted to take a class there and we were trying to coordinate it but it, it it didn't end up working for that session but they they've made a few provisions now so if you want to do one class a year I think there's like an administrative fee um, and plus the pr price of the class you know so you can take one class a year and then there's another thing where I think for one year they let you be a kind of like a member uh, a sort of part a member who's considering becoming a full-time member and you can take as many classes as you want for one full year um and then and then after that um you either decide to become a member or 
or you can go back to doing one class a year um, as, a, as a guest member. So anyway, I don't know all the details yet, but if anybody's interested, um, there are lots of, lots of classes that are taught there. There's, um, there are knitting classes and painting classes and uh, cross stitch and, and, um, and, and needlepoint. needlepoint and weaving. And you know, uh, some of the things they're not able to do online, but many of the things they are. Um, so anyhow, if anybody's interested, you can look up the Handy, Handicraft Club in Providence and, um, and you can certainly email them and tell them that, you know, that you know me and that, and that, um, and that you're interested in learning more about it and, and they'll set you up with information if you want to take some classes there. But, um, anyway, and you can take my classes too, if you want to do that. So, um, so yeah, so I don't know what, oh, I can show you what my next class is. We're doing that doll. We're doing, um, we're doing this next. Uh, this, uh, this starts not this Monday, but the following Monday. But um, we're making these girls. Um, so yeah, so we'll do, yeah, so we'll do a little, a whole bunch of different clothing. And I just ordered um, mohair for their hair. So that's coming. So that's what we're doing next in and um at the handicraft club <laughs> starting in two weeks oh. <laughs> hey cynthia one one more question about that chain stitch on the front of the coat yep um i can see that it comes up the front but then you have the collar where it turns mm -hmm. yep um so, so i'm just trying to see the transition i guess yep so um so here's what i did i started um i started it the uh wait no i started it here the direction of the chain stitch is going this way so i started it right at that that sort of pivot point where i want the collar to fold down and then i went all the way around zoop zoop zoop, zoop. and at this point um i took i i finished that link of the chain stitch and i went through to this side and yeah. then i started doing my chain stitch here right so it's like i just um so i ended this one link here let me zoom in again Yep. So you've kind of folded over and uh, yep. so I, on the yeah. So I, I I tacked that link down, which is what you're doing with each link of the chain stitch, right? Yeah. And then I came through this way, and then I just did my chain stitch on this side, so that when I folded the collar down, they would be on the same side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Any other questions about the mouse today, or any any anything else? Okay. Have Cynthia. Your, one question. Yeah. I don't know whether you can see me. I can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think I asked you this, but I don't, and I'm not sure whether you answered it or not. The, <laughs> uh, Nessie. Can yeah. you see Nessie? Yeah, uh -huh, I can. Okay. Oh, so, I love that color a, combo. Which I really, really love. So I got magnets. I, I asked you about magnets and I did okay. get a few magnets. So I put a, rare, a six millimeter rare earth magnet, both in the snorkel and in her mm -hmm. nose mm -hmm. and so it really really sticks on well oh great and then but do you have a source of these magnets it took a long time for me to get them mm. there's a place um let me um i mean i think i listed it in one of our last here i'm going to stop stop this share and see if i can find a link okay um, it's, on your, it's on your patreon it is but i can't that? remember which Okay. post it's in um but hold on i think it's called magnacraft let me just let me just go online right now and see if i can track it down because that's a great okay. source i at some point i'd love to carry these but i just don't have okay. enough of them to do it yeah okay or magcraft maybe mag maybe it's just magcraft magcraft and is it on etsy mm -hmm. Um, no, it's oh, just, okay. it's just online and it is, yes, okay. it is. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to do a screen share right now and, um, and show you yeah, I the ordered website. From that place and they came super fast. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. So this okay. is the website okay. Okay. and, okay. um, and then they're disc magnets okay. and, um, and they have all different sizes. They're there. I think if you double click on this they give you the um okay. it, they give it to you in both 
inch you know in millimeters and inches somewhere i can't okay. remember okay but um okay. but yeah you can okay. you can go through there and and um and Thank they you. yeah and they have great i think they have pretty good prices too okay. um yeah great Thank yeah. you. yep you bet okay okay all right what else have we got here i'll move this up so it's not blocking me hmm. Does anybody else have questions? Okay, I can ask one thing since Good. I, I don't want to take up too much time. But no worries. Uh, these are some of my animals that I've made of yours, and we're talking about stuffing now. See, mm -hmm. these, two, see these two boxes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, this Sco one. Is scoot smaller. them over just a little bit to your. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I. This is actually the first one I made, the one in green. Yeah. And I thought that turned out really well. Yeah. The next one I made for my sister, and it was really tall and skinny. Mm. And I've had this happen a couple of times. Do you think what happened is I don't have enough stuffing in the, in the head? I would yeah. say so. Yeah. It's, it's funny, like, um, the... the... I mean, it's okay, but it's, I'm not happy with it. As, yeah, know, not there's happy. not as much. Um, you know what, um, Moira, did you, when, when I first started doing Patreon, I think when we were doing the, um, the Red Panda. Yes, yeah, so um, I just joined. You just joined. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a bit earlier, um, anybody who's bought my Fox before, I did an update on the pattern. Right. And I noticed I, that, I noticed that, and that's the other question, that these have a gusset, mm -hmm. which I like, but you found that you change the head well you know i was finding that a lot of people when they were stitching in the gusset if if they huh. didn't stitch it perfectly on the left and the right side then their head would be co cockeyed kind of like oh, torqued, okay torqued. I got it. and so I got it. and so i started yeah. doing these heads that had darts to form the the volume instead of the gusset okay. and um and but some people are like I like the gusset one better, and some of the people okay. like the new one. Yeah, <laughs> Karen says she likes the gusset better, and I so like I. The, but the new one sounds probably nice. Too. Okay, that makes. But sense. anyhow, but what I was going to say is that you've already bought the fox pattern, and I'm happy to send you the new version of it. Okay. Just you know, just just because you've you've already bought it, it's the same pattern basically. So I just I just send you the new version. And, um, and then you'll have both. And the new version also has lots more information as far as, um, I'm gonna take this share off so that we're, so that I can see you guys bigger. Um, yeah. Hold on, it's not allowing me to do it. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. So, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Well, you've already bought it and then you have both. Oh yeah, it has, um, it has lots more techniques in there too. So um, yeah. there's just, there's like more content. Um, yeah. As, as I develop more, I try to go back and read. I have read. noticed that, that, I mean, I recently stitched the, the cats. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, I mean, yeah, this pattern, you had a lot more. Going a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny, you know, like, I, mm. I actually just got, somebody wrote me a review. They just got the cat pattern. They're like, this is way more complicated than it, you know, I'm, I usually get like really good reviews and she gave me a one, a one star review on the cats. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. And I thought, really? Like, but she was like, it was too complicated. I was like, okay. Anyway, but you know, it's like, you know, I try to add more so people oh. have like all the, like the most detail that they could possibly yeah. have, you know? Um, but apparently that one was too much for her. So like you know whatever. <laughs> whatever but um anyhow yeah so hopefully that's a good thing for most people <laughs> i like the detail i i, good. I thought it was really nice i like it good good okay they're, they're getting pretty insane to print i have to say I, every time i go to print a like a you know for production it's like oh my gosh they're like 24 pages now. well i always get i usually print them out i usually yeah. get the instant download yeah that's good that's good yeah. So are are you seeing Cynthia that when we've bought the downloads before the updated versions are in there? Um, no, no, but that's a good idea, actually. Maybe I should include both versions in the download. 
maybe I should include both versions when people buy the download of the foxes. That's a great idea. You could have both. Okay, I love it. I'm going to do that, but I haven't. Um, so, um, so maybe what you guys can do is anyone who's on today who wants that pattern, who's already bought the fox and, and, and in their old version, let me know and I'll forward you um, the new one. Okay. And can sound? I ask about the new one? The new one, I've looked at it and it doesn't seem as if the nose is as long. Well, that's part of that anatomically cute thing again. Okay. I decided that I liked a slightly more blunt nose. Okay. And that okay. that for me felt cuter. But, you know, that's not. I might try that. I might yeah. try that. I've already made six boxes, but I might try the blunter one. I'm, now I'm going to make yeah. some of my granddaughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. Good. They might like the other one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's fun. You know, and you can, and whatever, you can make it in different colors too. Have you made them in any, yeah. uh, some people make them, I've seen them in gray, all in white. Um, people are making them in all different colors. I, you know. I, uh, my foxes have all been foxy colors. Foxy just, colors. Yeah. But I've made like one with the coat. I've made the cape. Yeah. Uh, the fairy coat, you know. Oh, different I, coat. So I want to get more clothing. Um, I love the clothes. Yeah, yeah I, I want to make more clothing, clothes. you know, for them. And yeah. that's one of the reasons I, 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 I started going with all the same body for yeah. the for the, the newer animals. I'm the, the lions. I got a little I went off. I went off off beat and did a different body. And then I was like, oh, dag nabbit. That's like now none of the clothes fit and go back and forth. So um, but anyway. Um, but if anybody wants to, you can plop that lion head on a fox body and it'll fit. And then you can just put it with all the same clothes. Mm -hmm. So just like, okay. you know, lose the lion body. And... <laughs> okay. No, I did. I was able to adapt my grandson had asked for a squirrel for Christmas, which was like oh. almost impossible to find. So oh. actually they adapted the lion into a squirrel. <gasps> Oh, that's Which, great. I was trying to find the picture. I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> oh, do send it. I'd love to see. Because, and I used, um, for the tail, I actually used some of that uh, fur felt kind of stuff. It's like a, you buy in sheet at the craft store. Fur felt? Uh, oh, I want to know about this. Wait, I'll, I can go get that. Yeah, show oh, me. I'd be interested to see that squirrel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. I'll show you guys. Um, I think... Where do I have it? I think it's in, um, I, let's see, she's still, she's still looking. Nico Pico. Okay, it's, um, it's, it's faux fur. It's comes in a square of the, this. Oh, that's, oh, oh yeah. but wait, but it, but it, um, but is, is it felt on the other side? No, it's not. It's oh, oh, okay, okay. But okay. I just obviously made a tail and I stuffed it because so that's what it. the quote to them is it faux hair? Um, I think that's just faux fur. I don't it's think it's mohair. It's just faux fur, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can get, I don't know if any of you guys know about a place, uh, it's out in California, I think, and it's called yeah, so I, Edinburgh Imports. Do you oh, know yeah, that place? Okay. Yeah. And there's another place in California that sells a lot of mohair also and i'm trying to remember the name of it yeah oh oh what's it? helen what are you pu you're putting something that's, up hold it's the oh, squirrel so oh, oh, no. oh. oh good oh my goodness and there's his tail <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> will you will you send me that picture sure oh i'd love to see i'd love to that's see <laughs> And um, that's his really little great. pants. The oh, tail God. comes out of his pants. Oh my gosh, it's so yeah, cute. Yeah, because the, the lion pants have a little button on the back yeah. that you put yeah. the yeah. through. Let me show you guys one other thing. Um, let me see if I can get this. I want to get this down again so I can mirror the iPad. Um, so I did, I tried this thing that I haven't, uh, AirPlay iPad, hold on, share. Uh, shoot, I got to get this going again. Just a second, we're almost there. Uh, okay. Um, come on, iPad. There we go. I think we're good. Okay. All right. So, oh, boy. Oh my gosh, everything gets so hard to see. All right. Here we go. We are back. 
back in. So this is, um, so this was something, I haven't finished this, his head pops off, but um, I was trying to come up, you know, um, it, on the red panda, we did all that kind of brushing out mm. of the surface. And so I did this thing with um, this one, because I wanted to create a fuzzy chest on a cat and a fuzzy tail. And so I did, I layered, um, I just th pretend, <laughs> pretend this is felt. <laughs> but um, so th to make the pattern, I, um, I basically made like clapboards out of felt, you know, like I did a layered thing, like, like one, okay. two, three, yeah. and then I, and then I stitched from the backside. So I would stitch from the backside and just kind of whip stitch the surface, the surface so that it didn't show on the front. Mm -hmm. Let me see if, let me get, let me actually get real actual felt to show you this because it's, um, that paper that's not really very functional. So let's see. So say you have, I'm just gonna do it with pins. So if we have our felt and then we go like boom, boom, boom. Um, and then it's attached. So you um, attach these little kind of shingles or whatever. Um, and then, um, and then on this side, you would do the feathering technique where you brush out the edge. Um, and I, but I made them so close together, like these guys were a lot shorter, I guess it was more like that, you know? So it was like the distance between them wasn't very much. And so I brushed out all the edges and that's how you can kind of see, I don't know if you can even, you can barely see, oh, here, there's, there's a layer. Mm -hmm. So it's just all those layers and then you brush it out um, with a pin oh, and then with a little comb and you can, um, and you can get these really fuzzy furry things. But the only thing that you have to make sure of is that you, you know, you lay your pattern, you get all your layers kind of organized and you lay your pattern out and draw, trace around your pattern and only stitch from where your drawn lines are so that you can cut the shape without cutting through your stitching. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that? If anyway, but so there's another way of doing that. But I have to say, Helen, right? That yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love what you did with adding the fur in there because like this is a real. I mean, it's fun, but it's a real pain in the tuchus, and that looked amazing. Mm -hmm. The combo well, was so cute. He said that because when he asked me if it would have to, he said it had to have a big fluffy tail. So I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So what am I gonna do? <laughs> So. No, that's brilliant. It was great. What a great solution. <laughs> I we love it. Make a um, uh, felt. I don't know if it's still available, but it was. It was a little bit furry. Nothing like that. Yeah, but it was a little furry, and it it had kind of a modeled effect where you know, kind of an antiquey look. Yeah, I, I was if they'll make it or not. I was searching for I have an old hat that is um th they used to make fur felt. So they used to make felt that had like yeah. be beaver fur like embedded mm -hmm. into it or or, or any other kinds of fur and then they would brush out the surface and it was amazing. Anyway, I have a hat that has like a brushed beaver fur surface and I was looking and um I think there's like I mean, uh, when I lived in New York, there was a hat place where you could buy hat blanks and, and you know, to be, to, to be formed. Um, and they still had these beautiful fur felt hats. Um, anyway, I was looking for some to see if we could make animals out of it. <laughs> because I thought that would be amazing. But I, 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 was, I don't think there are any manufacturers that are doing it anymore. The shop I was thinking about in California is called Intercal. In, Intercal? Intercal. And have, I've gotten like Intercal. a lot of different sizes of joints um, and discs, and but I just got some black long-haired mohair specifically to make squirrel tails. Really? Uh, for a okay. different, I've also I've got a book of jointed animals, and I'm okay. black squirrel because we have black oh. squirrels in Michigan, and where my son lives. Uh -huh. So. Anyway, that's the shop that has, she's got a lot of mohair. 
Oh, good. I think she's also got both of her stuff. Like okay. That. Okay. And oh, it's, cool. It's on, it's on Etsy, but it's also got a website. All right. I'll find her. I'll find her. I haven't ordered from um, Edinburgh Imports it's, for a while, but, um, but they really... Intercal has a lot of stuff. Has a lot. That's great. It's great to have another source. Yeah. 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 It, Edinburgh Imports used to have an insane selection. I mean, yeah. I think like it was, it was shocking. I used to use them. I developed a set of kits when I worked at Martha Stewart that were all mohair stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they, I had a, I had like a bag of all their samples and there must've been 500, you know, yeah. swatches in there. It was amazing. But last time I, last time I looked on their website, it, they, it was very reduced the amount, mm -hmm. the amount of supplies mm -hmm. they had. So it's nice to have another, um, another source. I haven't done anything in mohair for a while, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Cynthia, this yeah. is Lisa. Oh, hey, how uh, are you? Hi, I'm super excited about making those dolls. Are those going to be through Etsy or on Patreon, or do we need to figure out um, how to do those? Um, to you know, in Rhode Island? Um, I'm, I'm starting that class, not this coming Monday. I have the, the final rabbit classes on Monday. It'll be the following week. Um, so you could, you could call the club and, and try to be part of that. Or I may, um, I may do, I may do some more of these. I, my, my thought is that it would be really fun to do more of these live things with people so we can connect more. Um, I love to do the videos, but, um, but this is kind of great because it's loose and we can chat and people can ask questions. Um, obviously the other things are a little more, um, you know, edited and organized, but, um, but, um, but I was thinking about maybe doing a live thing every month. Um, do you guys think, I mean, I mean, I need to do a little poll and talk to everybody. Lisa's giving me a good, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Karen says yes too. Okay. Yeah, good. I, um, like I would do it. I would definitely, yeah. You would, you would, be, okay. <laughs> more, more. Okay, good. Well, I just yeah. thought it was, it was, um, I don't know. I think one of the really fun things about, about Patreon is that you have this ability to, we really have this ability to hang out and, and you know, spend some time together and learn from each other mm -hmm. and, and so forth. And, um, and I love making the videos, but it's definitely, um, um, it definitely takes a little while. The duck is taking a little while. Okay. <laughs> I knew it was going to take a while, but it's taking it's like a little longer than I expected. It's like with a video, you feel like you have to have the final thing done from A to Z, covering every single basis. But this allows it to be, oh, well, maybe well, I should be doing this. And it yeah. gives flexibility. I think so, too. I think so, too. I mean, the only thing about it is that not everyone can join, you know, but, um, but, but hopefully, you know, maybe it's not going to be as fun to watch when, you, when you're not live, but... <laughs> but the rest of them will have to suffer through it or they can join us next time. <laughs> They're real going to realize what they've missed and they'll I really know. Hard to join. I know. That's right. That's right. Well, we've had people joining from I mean, um from all over. We had somebody from England today. She joined us first. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Yeah. There you are. I've been watching all the way through. Sorry okay. I haven't got a camera, but it's just because no. I've no. got two dogs and <laughs> Uh, we've been making this tea in the background and oh it's been hectic so i put it on mute so that i didn't disturb but i have been watching it all the time it's been good i'm glad you're still there i wasn't sure i can't see everybody i wish i could see everybody at the same time but i can't figure out how to and listening to, to the people who was asking questions was really interesting as well it was some good questions from everybody good good oh good well this is so great i can't thank you guys enough i mean really like this is like um, making these videos and doing this thing on Patreon. It's like, and can, just connecting with you here. It's like, I can't, you know, um, my partner is like watching me. So she's like, it makes me want to poke my eyes out. <laughs> you know? just, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like, I don't, it's so, it's just so nice. I love, I love teaching at the Handicraft Club and I just love talking to other people who are, want to do this stuff too. And, and I just, you know, and, and do, you know, with Etsy and doing Thread Follower, like the business that I've had, um, you know, it's, it's take, I'm terrible at marketing. Oh, God, just awful. And it's like hard to, to, to you know, stay regular with social media and all the different platforms and stuff. And, um, and so Patreon is one of those things that's like for 10 years, every summer, it's like, 
oh my God, am I going to be able to like pay my bills? You know, and, um, and so this is one thing that like through everybody like just sharing in this like little bit a month, it's like stabilizing things so that I can do more of this for you guys. And, um, and I don't have the, and, and hopefully, you know, the, the goal is that I won't have these months where it's sort of like a wing and a prayer, you know, um, and, but I just, I, I just can't even thank you guys enough for being part of this. It really, it means so much and I love doing it and I love seeing you here live and, and like Zoom, how great, right? <laughs> that's, that's what's nice is that we are able, we're all stuck in our houses pretty much. So. I know, I know. It needs to be somewhat social. I know. No, it's good. It's really good. And, and I mean, they've made it. It was funny last year. I, um, I had everything set up. I wanted to do this here. I'm going to get, get this out of the way and put people back up again. Um, um, how do I stop that share? There it is. Um, oh, there we are. Um, you know, I wanted to do this more video and I wanted to do live workshops and stuff like that. And, um, and so I, but it was like getting all the equipment, um, you know, I had to get lighting and I had to get a new computer that I could do, that I could do video editing and, and whatnot on. And, and I finally, you know, si signed up with Zoom like last January and then we went away. We have a, uh, my partner and I um, have this place down in Uruguay, um, where, which we can't get to right now. But, um, but anyway, um, so we went down there and then everything hit and we came back and it was like, oh, I can't, I can't even believe it. Like I got everything set up and like the minute I got back, I was able to start teaching and it was just, oh, yeah. I couldn't believe like the, the, the bad timing of the pandemic, but the good timing of the equipment. So, um, so it's been really fun to just, uh, I don't know, get to know the platform and, and, and connect to people online. So um, anyway. So, and very cool that you made the investment before, for it was imperative that you make the investment. I know it was like so the the angels on my shoulder were watching out for me. I don't know, but yeah, I just came. I came back and we actually got the last flight out of Uruguay before they shut the borders. It was like, oh my god, uh, yeah, craziness. But hopefully, hopefully next year we'll be back in gear and. Um, and um, if anybody wants to come down and take workshops there, <laughs> it'll be on the table. But um, yeah, and I can, and we're getting internet there now too. So I'll be able to do Zoom classes from there, which will be fun. See, the beauty yeah. of, the, of the Zoom is that you, you broaden your, your audience. Yeah. Yeah. It's just great because like you can really connect to people who, I mean, it's, I love teaching in-person classes so much. Um, but but honestly like you know and we love the camaraderie of being there in person and and so forth at the club when i teach but um but people can really see what i'm doing better on zoom you know because you can zoom you can you can zoom in and you can get into the details and and when i'm when i teach in person i can really only show two people at a time what i'm doing you know because it's everything's so small and but, you um, also don't have to pack up your entire studio. True <laughs> enough, I know. <laughs> no. I love them, touching yeah. your samples. I what? You don't have people touching your samples. Oh, well, no, that's fine, too. I don't mind people touching the samples. Usually the samples get pretty ratty after a while because my nieces and uh, nephew and stuff play with them. So somebody... I I need to sign off. My sister's going to be calling here. So All thank right. You so thank you so much for coming. It was so nice. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. I'm going to sign off, too. All right, you guys. Have a great thank afternoon. You really thank, thank you, you for thank everything. You for doing thank it. you, everyone, for Bye. coming. And if you have any, if there's anything that just that I need a reminder about, just shoot me a, a, a note on, on Patreon. Um, I've got Juliet. I'm going to send you number 10, Needle. And, um, and, I, and I'm going to do eye markings and whatever. But if there's anything I don't post that I said I was going to post, remind me. You said you said you were going to do a lot of stuff. I know. <laughs> Good luck. On the, what was I thinking? Those scribble notes that make a lot of sense when you write them down. It's like, what did I? I know. It's like I have to remember the thing I was talking about and this thing that I'm going to do later. Forget it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, reminders are always welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right, you guys, Thank take you. care. I'll see you Bye. next time. Bye. 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 Monday. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Bye. <laughs>